No, I was just going to ask if you're close with uh, Juan Colo, but I mean, uh, Isitolo, but I forgot he's in uh, Australia now, huh? Isitolo, yeah. Um, yeah. Has he been there for a while, I think? Uh, he, he said he moved there about a year and a half ago. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah. He you was are. supposed to be on tonight, but uh, I hope he's not having problem with <laughs> logging on to. <laughs> Just blame it on the internet, man. Yeah. Oh. And hit with a wrecking ball. So this is the third and final round. Dr. Wari in the blue corner is in front from Nigeria against the Tongan Tank Wolf Graham, the personality plus man of these Atlanta Olympics, but he's in a lot of strife here in the semi-final still. If he does go out, he goes out with Tonga's first and uh, so far only Olympic medal. But with a two-point margin, anything can happen here in the final round. Yeah, he uh, points for the Nigerian. He knows he's behind Wolf Graham. He's really got to try and do something. But his opponent... He's going to try and fight a smart fight, I think, here in the third round and stick and move, stay away. Good shot there from Wolfgang. Didn't get a point for that uppercut. No, it should have. Should have. It's a marvellous shot. The Nigerians perform very well here in these two rounds, though, having seen what Wolfgang oh, has done. Oh, he's the got him he's hurt. Fought. Didn't get a point. He didn't get a point. He's nearly knocked the bloke's head off, and he didn't get a point. He's got him in all sorts of trouble. He's now just trying to get him off him so he can line him up. The referee will tell them to break. Not scoring with the uppercuts. Oh, and again, he got a point for that one. That was another lovely right hand. So there's only the one point. And can the Tongan Tank finish over the top of the Nigerian? I'm sure the crowd would love to see it. Oh, he goes to the body. The rip was a great shot. Good move. Under the right hand, left rip, left hook. He tried. That was a real good move. And I, I, I'll be honest, I don't know what that caution was for. He didn't sing, signal that he thought the, the shot was low, but nonetheless. Dr. Wari looking tight. He was in trouble about 30 seconds ago. He's hanging on by a point. Oh. Now two points. So back, back to the way they started, a two-point margin. Oh. oh, he's come straight through him with a big right hand. He needs to throw punches in bunches, though. He needs to double up. At least two at a time he needs to throw. He needs to land a couple of those good right hands, and he could get over the line here. The Tongan Tangy miss with that one. Dokawari on the back foot. Oh, oh the he's right ended hand. up. The right hand and again has evened it up. Oh, the crowd are behind him. He's on the attack. Forty seconds to go, and we'll go to tie break unless there's a clean shot in the next thirty odd seconds. Dokawari's corner has just notified him that it's even. He's thrown a flurry and didn't get a point. Coming thirty seconds, under thirty seconds now. Wolf Graham looking for that big one. One good clean shot could get this. Oh, he's been nailed. He didn't get a point for it. Oh, he's landed. Wolf Graham's hit the front. 12 it's... seconds ago. If he was physically capable of it, you'd tell him to run, wouldn't you? He's going to get it. In front. He's going to get the fight. The Tongans are over the line. He's got the Nigerian on the back foot. The bell's going to go. So the Tongan Tank is through to the gold medal bout. They'd never won an Olympic medal before this, and now they're assured of at least a silver hey. to fight Vladimir Klitschko in the final, and Vladimir he... Klitschko of Ukraine. And I reckon he'll win the gold. I really do. I reckon he's every chance of beating Klitschko, mate. He's only got a, he's got a fair right hand, Klitschko. It's somewhat of a toss-up, which Carl box him, but uh, we'll wait and see, because when, oh. he, when he hits you, you stay hit, as you can see. No, I think he'll go well against Klitschko. I really do. He's a very smart-thinking fighter, this guy. You wouldn't think so to look at him initially, but he's a, he's a thinking super heavyweight. 
Yes, yeah, you can't judge a book by its cover. He may not necessarily be like a Rhodes Scholar. The winner from the red corner. There he is, and he's got the result. And don't the crowd just love him. And he's picked up his opponent in center ring. You didn't see that a moment ago. As would concentrating on the crowd, but he just picked up his opponent. So the Tongan tank is through. The victory ceremony for the Super Heavyweight Division will now take place. La cérémonie de remise des médailles pour la catégorie poids super lourd va commencer. Champion and gold medalist representing the Ukraine. Champion olympique et médaillé d'or représentant l'Ukraine. Malo Beha, oui. Let's go. Silver medalist representing Tonga. Medaille d'argent et représentant le Tonga. Paya Wolfgram. Crowd favorite. It sure was. Bronze medalist representing the Russian Federation, Alexei Lizin, and from Nigeria, Duncan Dokiwari. Medaille de bronze représentant la Fédération de Russie, Alexei Lizin, et le Nigeria, Duncan Dokiwari. Atlanta 96, the fight that saw the birth of a South Pacific legend. Oh, uh. What the fuck, man? <laughs> People have a reputation for being uh, uh, extra crazy in their occasions. Like, listen, uh, no, this, is, this is great. This is a great homecoming for me. <laughs>
I missed my hair. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a moment, huh? Wow. Yeah. That's exciting. Uh, uh, um, <clears throat> okay, we'll start, man. So, <clears throat> okay. Hello, the Tongan pro athletes of today and yesterday family. It is my pleasure and an honor to introduce our guest tonight. He's known as the Tongan tank, Tongan warrior, uh, Tongan super hero. heavyweight, <laughs> Tongan <laughs> hero, yeah. super heavyweight, silver medal in the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta, Georgia, making him the first athlete from Tonga to win a medal. He now lives in Auckland with his family. Please welcome the first Tongan ever to win a medal. A Tongan warrior, Tongan truck, Tongan tank, <laughs> fire wolf grand. <laughs> Thank you. Your grandparents, the people that supported you throughout your career. Mm. Uh, you know, they're, they're important people in your life. So please welcome and uh, come on in. Uh, and absolutely. Uh, Tim, and, uh, you know, I gotta take time to thank you guys for what you're doing. I think it's very important that uh, our voices out there and our stories are out there. And uh, so we have to thank you for for this wonderful uh, program that you have on. Uh, you know, uh, for me, you know, that uh, nothing was ever done alone. Uh, I stand on the shoulders of, of other people. And I, uh, we have to start with some of my heroes. And of course, uh, uh, young Sekona, as a 1970s, as a young man growing up, uh, I wanted to be an all black, I wanted to be an all black, but uh, always in the back of my mind, you had uh, Kidiane Lave and uh, young Sekona, Jimmy Halafihi, and all those sort of heroes that I grew up uh, looking at. And not just in boxing, I mean, in rugby, you got the Valita Marquez and, uh, and uh, those guys that were there for you guys. And of course, in 1974, uh, one of Australia has uh, has always made me think that Tonga can can get up there in, in top of the world and, and beat the best out there. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. Mm. You know, we um, you know we uh, created this page just to um, you know bring back the memories of all the athletes from Tonga that has taken the name of Tonga throughout the world, and uh, you know it's just it's 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 humbling to to have uh, some of this athlete to uh, bring them to life again for, mm -hmm. you know, for, for most of the Tongans, you know, some of the uh, younger people uh, nowadays really don't, you know, has, don't know the names of, of the uh, former athletes that, you know, they, they, they come from our island. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, people like you that has, you know, gone on and, and do good things and taking the name. I mean, the Olympics, man. I mean, in 1996, I, I know a lot of the, the Tongan community watch you box. And, you know, they, you know, they were so proud of, of, of what you have done, uh, especially in the Olympics, and especially here in America too, man. We were watching you put uh, in, in the Olympics and, that flag comes up, and you know people are proud of of uh, what yeah. you have done. So yeah, you know, and of course, America played a very special role in in the Olympics. Not only were they the host, but I had um, I deliberately come here and camped out in Arizona, arranged okay. to uh, to stay there and camp in Arizona, and um, and I was helped a lot by the fact that there was a lot of boxes here, which I wouldn't have gotten down outside of the world. So. Um, you know, I took the opportunities that this presented, and 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 I'd be honest, if I didn't come and camp here in the states, and if I wasn't exposed to that level of aspiring, uh, I, I I really don't think I would have um, gone as far as I did. Huh. Ah, because um, I think was in 1994, you you were in the uh, the Commonwealth mm -hmm. in Canada, right? Yeah. You, yeah. You were there, and then '95, you were in Tonga. You won the championship in Tonga. Yeah, 
Yep. Uh, the 994 count again, I was camped out there in California with uh, a bloke by the name of David Taufo, who used to box here, and he trained us there and, uh, in California, and we stayed there for about three months before moving on to Canada. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it, was a, it was the first time I've ever been exposed to that kind of competition at that level. Sure. And it sure. just made me want to stay in time. Now, the interesting thing about, about that was that I was originally uh, the New Zealand champion at the time. And they came to Tonga, but they uh, said they weren't going to consider me for the for the Commonwealth Games because I haven't been active enough. Oh. So, <laughs> so I gave, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll go and during the rugby season, I'll go and play rugby, and then I'll come back into boxing. So, oh, <laughs> so you stay in shape that way too. <laughs> yeah. Did you feel that there was any politics played into that at that time? Um. I, it was easy to, but I think it was just the fact that um, they just wanted to, they wanted to pick the best thing they had, and I just wasn't active enough for them. Uh, wow. But the funny New thing Zealand is, champ, a New Zealand champion is not, oh well, my goodness. It happens, it happens. Well, what happened was when I went to uh, Canada and came back with a bronze medal, they invited me into an Olympic camp. But I said, no, I've, I've given my, my luck for Tonga, and I'm going to stay with Tonga. And, uh, you know, and now before that, I, I've never gone to training in Tonga. I've always trained here and flew over and fought for Tonga. And then they had uh, uh, put up a, the, the politics did come in because they, they had uh, um, opposed my going for Tonga. And had, uh, so I got a letter saying that from the Iba, they've always going to represent Tonga. I have to live in Tonga for three months. And that involved me, oh. and that involved me leaving my job here to go that far. So. I, uh, I left my job and, and went and camped in Tonga for three months. So that I, even though I was a, a Tongan passport holder, uh, Jeez. so th they wanted to make it hard for me, I guess. But uh, it worked out for me, I guess. Well, whoever they were that was trying to block you, you know, I'm pretty sure they saw how far you went. I mean, right? Still, they silver went. medalists, you know, it was silver medalists. Yeah. Yes, it was a motivation to go in there. And shame yeah. on them. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, I, to me, maybe you're being a little modest, huh? you're not giving yourself the full <laughs> credit of, of what took place, you know, I mean, your, your raw talent took you there, even with the, the little uh, training that you had, as you have mentioned, yeah. um, I mean, to go that far, I mean, we saw the guy who won the championship, Klitschko, or whatever mm -hmm. his name is, yeah. he had a great career after oh. the Olympics, huh? Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that, that's one of the things that uh, I was hoping Tom would pick up on is that, uh, you know, I went to the Olympics with 20 fights, coming against guys with over 200, 300 fights. Yes. And, um, you know, I, I competition is development. And I've always tried to push that to Tonga. Um, unfortunately, it's sort of fallen in defense. So as you can see, I thought that opened the door for everybody else to come into the Olympics to, to, to Tonga to, you know, we've done it. If the door's open, mm -hmm. let's go do it. But it hasn't worked out that way, so it's a little bit of sweet, a uh, little bit of sweet for me to to see that the the legacy hasn't been fully uh, grasped by Tonga yeah. itself. Man, uh, you know we are glad that our government is trying to get rid of some of these older folks that has been taking care of you, uh, all of our athletes, and rugby, you know, rugby league, mm -hmm. and as far as boxing, as I remember, a, a guy from here. Um, I mean, uh, Samson Pooha. Yeah? Samson, yeah. Yeah, he went to Very Tonga, true. and it was like they didn't even want him to fight the best over there. So he mm. had to come to New Zealand for a little bit to prove mm. himself and then go back to Tonga, I heard. Mm. But, um, man, you know, to me, politics back then, it just plays in roles where it doesn't belong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it still it still does. The politics, uh, you know, I'm, I, when I think of politics and sport, people say oh, they need to be separated. You can't separate them yeah. out. It yeah. uh, plays into each other, um, and therefore, the, for sports to develop, uh, it needs it needs politics needs to be changed, uh, and the outlook of the uh, administrators. And and, uh, and I've always said the Tonga is small enough for it to become a government department. <laughs> <laughs> that it can, <laughs> that it can be, and get the right people in there to fix. Because at the moment, you've got the Olympic body, uh, which stands away from the government, and they fight each other, 
and it doesn't uh, at the end of it um, you know if rugby's suffering which is our number one sport by far then what are the rest of the sports up to you know yes and and, and i see talents just just falling off the wayside and uh, both, both girls and boys, i mean who remembers that time the, the the minister of uh education or sports came out and said he didn't want girls to go into sports that sort of that sort of <laughs> here you know in two in the 2000s and we still had this sort of attitude going on and that yeah. case. Tim, just before you came in, uh, go ahead, Anu. Uh, oh, no, I'm just, just adding on. Uh, they, they just named the new CEO for the Ikale team. They just announced it earlier. Oh, for the union team, eh? For the, for, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, apparently... A guy named uh, Peter Hardy. Yeah. He apparently to, he's Balangi uh, and <laughs> didn't yeah. like it. He's eh? from Australia, Peter Hardy. Yeah. Mm. Uh, he used to help around. He's always around us uh, back in when I was involved with the Ikaletahi. And what do you think? Of uh, but uh, he's strict all about the paperwork business. So hopefully he'll come through. He'll he'll do yes. good for the team. But I yes. but the brother miss we need the like bias here. We need everybody to support him, not pick a side and just continue fighting against each other. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll end not, up going anywhere. Yeah, we not not come to him and give him the, the team list of who's going yeah. to really get it. You know? he's, your, he's your team. He's your who. He's your, who you're going to pick. I mean, <laughs> we joke about it, but it can't happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Bayer, just for me, Bayer. Uh, you're talking yeah. about how you went into uh, beforehand. You had 20 fights, be- mm-hmm. and everybody else had 200 plus. Mm-hmm. What was the challenge of the and what did you do to uh oh uh mm. oh. how did you overcome all of the uh challenge? Uh, I, I, I think it was just uh it had its benefit and the benefit was was there was, there was no pressure on me. In fact, when we went in and, the, and we saw the team list, the, uh, it was ranked and uh, I was number 42. And I thought, well, top 50 in the world, I thought it was award ranking. Until we read down the fine print and it said that it was only for the guys that showed up at the Olympics. There were 42, <laughs> and I was number 42. Uh, well, <laughs> and there was no pressure. Num- you came up number two, so you moved up 40 spots. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. But uh, you know, so I was really, I was, um, I was, but, but I think that the, the benefit was that there was no pressure on me. So I went in there with, with just having fun, having a good time. And I think if you saw me walking, walking to the day, is I look like somebody who just had a good day. Just kind yeah, of fun and, um, <laughs> you're loose, man. <laughs> yeah, but the, the disadvantage of that is that uh, the first time I've been exposed to that, that that sort of level of intense competition that went on for uh, you know the whole two weeks, and I think there was a little bit of uh, now don't mind me saying this so people can understand and people coming up with the thinking also about that experience is that uh, I had uh, I think near the end I just wanted to go home, you know I I, uh, I was done. And uh, my uh-huh. body, I was sore, my body was hurt. And, uh, you know, here's a minute of Tonga, thank you. I want to just want to go home. And, uh, well, I, I want to take my kids to Disneyland because they were there with me. Mm. And uh, I've been away for, for almost six months from them. So I actually, uh, we, we had um, arranged for the kids to come up with the, um, to Disneyland. That was my promise to them. They didn't know, they didn't want to know about the Olympics. They didn't care about the Olympics. Right, they didn't. They <laughs> You're right. They, they didn't care about the Olympics. They wanted to keep asking for Disneyland. So. Um, in fact, the, the, the night when uh, we were supposed to leave, uh, I said to my chef de mission, the, the, the boss, I said, look, I'm not coming back with the team. I'm going to Disneyland with my kids. And he said, no, but you can't. You've got to come back to us. You've got to come back to us to Tonga. I said, yeah, but no thanks. I've done my time. I'm going home with my kids. And he said, oh, yeah, I'm not going to tell them that I'm not, not going. And so he came back late at night and he said, uh, ask me again. Again, I told him the same story. I'm not coming back. I'm going back to, to Disneyland, to, to LA, uh, California. Uh, then I got a call from my mum. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they got to the boss, huh? They got to the boss, and so she <laughs> called and she said, uh, <laughs> you know? I hung up on her, so I hung up on her. There was no way, there was no way I'm going to move, I'm not going to take my kids, so I hung up on her. Next call it came, and uh, again, more, more unchristian things were said to me. <laughs> I hung up on her again. 
<laughs> and then I think uh, about an hour later, the uh, the boss came up and he said, if I came back to Tonga, they'll pay for me to come back to LA. And I said, oh, now you're talking. There you go. <laughs> right. There you go. Exactly. See how easy it is? Yeah. <laughs> That's how I got it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been in Tonga. I would have said, thanks. It's done. I'm, I'm, right. done. I'm going to like this land. So. That's you know, you, you pretty much answered my, my first question. Uh, where I was going to ask, you know, about, you know, because I saw Klitschko going on to a co great career. Eh? Mm -hmm. And just thinking back, you know, some of the Olympians, eh? mm -hmm. uh, like Sugar Ray, eh? and, uh, Oscar De La Hoya. I uh -huh. mean, these guys came out and, and had great careers, made yeah. some great money. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. But you answered that question, uh, why you didn't continue. But um, which brings me to my other question. Eh? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, yes, the Tonga did pay for you to go to Tonga. I heard you had some royalty treatment uh, in some of the towns, especially Vavau. Uh, Sina uh, Fa, she's not in here yet. She was saying that she'll be here. But she mentioned to me how, man, you were treated like royalty when you came to Vavau. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Vavau was, was, I wasn't going to go to Vavau initially. Uh, when they said I was coming to Tonga, I was just going to finish in Tonga. I had just asked to give me some time just to go and rest in Wawa to have a little break there for you know for a couple of days before going back home or right. back to back to Disneyland. So I um, I'd asked uh, Tasa if they could just arrange for me to go over there uh, with no intention of a celebration. And I said yes, but then uh, as the day came for me to fly to Wawa. I suddenly realized that there was going to be a celebration and it, <laughs> it was not going to be up to me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I, uh, so all the players was lounging in the, in, by, the, by the beach, went out the window. And, I was, <laughs> and I'm happy. And I'm happy because that's, that's my hometown. So that's my hometown. And uh, I, I, uh, I'm happy that they were included into the, into the um, celebrations. Yeah. What uh, town well, is that, please? I'm, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people are. Well, uh, I, I was Utumake is uh, where my 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 forefathers lived, mm -hmm. my Balangs. And then when I got there, a lady came up to me at the airport, and he said, "Stop calling yourself from Utumake. That's only a Balangi guy that came and lived there. Your Tongan mm -hmm. side is from Tuanuku. Tuanuku. <laughs> yeah. Tuanuku. Which is yeah. my it was just my uh, my 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 grandmother's side, my great grandmother's side." Right. And, with, and with connections to Kolomotua. So either way, I, I've got, I, I'm now Dumaki and I'm going to stay there. <laughs> Whoever gives me the most money at the, at the whole, whole <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You look like you have a question there. Is yeah, mine. Is mine. Uh, uh, go, go back to the Olympics. Uh, you know, in that, uh, in that video, I seen Tony uh, Fuli Lungi. I, I know Tony mm. trained you. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Uh, how, how, what, what was that like training Tony? Because I, I know, I, I caught a couple of his fights back in the eighties mm -hmm. when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. you no, know, he he was world ranked that time in the eighties. Yeah. But uh, what, what was it like training under him? Well, like you, I heard of Tony well before I even placed on the glove. And uh, he, how we ended up here was he came to Otara. And he started up the little gym, and yeah. um, I went in there just to get fit for for, for rugby, rugby league, and that's how I got involved with him. Um, he ended up coaching Tonga, and I ended up in Tonga as well. And uh, and that, but uh, you know, Tony probably uh, the best coach that Tonga had for the time. Uh, and there, I think he was the most experienced, and he brought a a new type of boxing to Tonga. And it involved uh, involved a jab and slipping punches, <laughs> which is uh, you know the typical Tongan fighter. You know the back then yes. was of course you know warrior to the end, and, yeah. and so I was I was very happy to have told Tony in the early stage of my career as as a, to do to, to, and he probably helped me a lot in getting that uh, those early successes that took me to the Olympics. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, Tony has had some good fights lately, as you mentioned. Huh? I mean, George Foreman, and to name a few. I mean, he, he's, this guy, I think he's here in Salt Lake right now, but uh, he lives in Arizona somewhere. Yeah. But uh, 
Tony's a great boxer. And, you know, if he, like uh, Hano is saying, hey, he has taught a lot of boys out here mm -hmm. and just waiting for a couple of them to flourish. Well, Which a guy named, uh, what well, Tim was mentioning, a guy, Fotu, uh, Kinikini Fotu. Yeah, Kini, uh, uh, Kini Fotu from Tonga. Mm. I'll take him. Out. Go ahead and tell him the story. Uh, oh, no, he, he, he saw a program and he wanted to find out if we can sponsor some of the kids from Tonga. And I said, well, eventually we will. Mm. But he mentioned that he had a son that he was a boxer. Mm. So I, I, I didn't know if he had, you know, but he's, I mean, he's, he's, He's got a he's got a nephew that uh, got, just got drafted this year that plays for the uh, Arizona Cardinal. I think is one of his brother's son. But they, you know they're athletic, very athletic too. So, oh, so look, really, really amazing talent. I mean, and Tonga, yeah. uh, as you guys well know, it's everywhere. But uh, you know, there, in, in terms of boxing, I see some kids in Tonga. And I think had they grown up and exposed to to, to uh, boxing in another country how far they would have been. And I mean, I see that when I was there training, I see it all the time. Um, you know, and we've got another boxer by the way, uh, who, who Hannah would know from his uh, side of the world. He's from his village from, um, his name is Huni. And he's making some headways out there in Australia. Oh, yeah. He was a young yeah, kid. Was that guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, I tried to steal him back when he was younger, when he was about a 14 year old, I tried to steal him for Tonga. Mm. Uh, and uh, wasn't successful because the uh, Australians heard wind of it and told me to to get lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that brings me to my question, is which why I wanted to bring that up. Um, yeah. You know, as far as our athletes growing up in Tonga, born and raised in Tonga, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden these foreigners come and grabs them and brings them like to New Zealand, Australia, mm -hmm. America, and all that. Huh? Yeah, I mean, yeah. what do you what do you think of what's your take on that? I'll take a um, just to go back to to to, to Huni again. Had I was had I been able to steal him to Tonga, mm -hmm. I sit back now and think that was a wrong move. That would have been a wrong move for him okay. because I think he would have come and died in the wild in Tonga. Mm -hmm. He's now in Australia. He's now the Australian champion. He's got some big things coming up in his, in his thing. And and uh, I think if I take him away, he would have lost, missed out on all that. Uh, and, I, and it's the same for the guys in Tonga. I, I um, if they can make some money, make a life out of it. Okay, uh, but I think also that Tonga needs to benefit from their, from at least developing them. Um, I, I, from what I understand, a lot of these rugby players, for example, come and take taken away, but there is no um, provision to feed back into the system in Tonga system, who produce yeah. them. Yeah. And uh, for example, in New Zealand, no rugby player in New Zealand gets gets taken away without some sort of uh, um, chain to the New Zealand Rugby Union. Yeah, they come back or there's some sort of so forth and um i think tonga needs to do that with their player with their young young players i'd be the last person to try to get in the way of uh, an athlete making money from his talents right and if they can go and make it somewhere else yeah london but please offer my baby tonga why not do it yeah. my <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, I think, uh, you know the problem we, is that with the new zealand rugby everybody the players that have been taken out of New Zealand, they're all under contract of, for a certain club. Mm. Oh. So their clubs get benefit from... With Tonga, they're not under contract, nobody. They're nobody, yeah. There's nobody there that's under contract uh, under someone to get their money back. Because mm. for them to take the, the players out of Tonga, they got to have a contract. Their player got to have a contract with the club in Tonga or with someone mm. to get that money. Because they're... Because right now the the big clubs they come and take because they know they don't owe nobody money because there's no contract in hand mm -hmm. right, for the person right. in Tonga. That's the downfall wow. of Tonga because in, in New Zealand everybody's got, it's under contract That's under it. a club, so that club will get the benefit of whoever's taking them. Mm -hmm. Their the team will pay them a certain percentage for them to take. Wow, why why yeah. can that happen in Tonga? Is that because it just doesn't? Every, because it goes to somebody else's pocket. Yeah, it's not fast money for our people in Donga. Oh. And they don't want to put in that work to to save our the future of our team or make money out of it. 
because the TIU should be doing it. Like, mm. get pick the best players out of high school and put them on the contract as a development player or mm-hmm. a, an academy. So whenever their player go overseas in whatever club he's going to, their club will pay the TIU the amount of money they own them. Yeah. What's so. what's the the young age that uh, a certain kid can sign a contract? Uh, do do you know? There you go. Strict. There's no contract. Uh, depends how. Oh, probably with the parents. High school. What? High school. High school. Yeah. All the school. All the school will come and take them, pick them up from sixteen. Oh, mm-hmm. Wow. Before they wow. feed them into the the big club to take them, mm. so mm. wherever school they go to overseas, they might get I, I don't know, but they might get benefit out of it if the, any club pick them up to go overseas or any club in their country, wherever country they go to, they get money out of their person. Yeah. It's just back when we uh, when Tim mm. brought up the idea eh? that um, maybe Tonga should allow that, but at the same time Tonga should have a little incentive was inside eh? right. well, not our government but our, <laughs> our officials eh? that yeah. you know that's taking care of things that they should we should get some kind of uh, benefit out of the it. TIU right now I'll just go sign everybody on the first 15 in like every high school if you're in the mm. first 15 you're signed mm. with the TIU mm. then whatever happened there whoever leave to go overseas they get money and hopefully they share their money with the family that whoever they person. Mm. So best of, they should do that already right now. Just go around, sign everybody up. What's your take on that, Bayer? Uh I know that uh, every year uh, <clears throat> that they have some sort of Tongan under fifteen team that comes in touring in New Zealand, and that becomes a, that becomes the the sales yard. For a lot of for a lot of the clubs here, because as they start picking them, a lot of other high schools that are here, because wow. they're, they'll be under fifteen, and all these high schools will be grabbing kids they want out of those teams, and uh, and then and, and uh, of course, as I said, the kids love would love to have the opportunity, and they do take them. Um, but always, always question my take on on the part of of, of which one? What 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 Fitu was saying? Yeah, that the the TRU or whatever uh, should be signing all the kids. Why not? Under contract and before teams come from. Absolutely. Why not? Why not have some sort of put that into the system? And I, I you know, I, I was talking to the president of boxing in Tonga, and um, he was, he at the time he was the uh, minister for uh, for sports for 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 the ministry ministry of uh, internal affairs, and he came and announced in a boxing meeting, which I didn't want to hear, <laughs> that uh, there was just signed fifty boys from Atere. But then signed 50 boys to go to Japan. Over the years, have signed 50 boys to right. go to Japan. Right. And uh, no mention of whether they, 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 um, at that itself received anything for it or Tonga rugby itself. itself I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think there was any of that, but uh, they were happy that, that 50 boys were taken. Yeah. And instead of being happy for that, they should have just sat back and said, hey, we had 50 boys have gone to Japan. We need something for that. And, yes. uh, and, I, and they deserve to have something for it. The boys and the family. And the family, exactly. Yeah. Especially family, the family. Especially, yeah. yeah. Family. But because of with the family, I know there's a family, uh, if it's in for education, they're happy. And, they, uh, you know, because as soon as they were going to take them to school, they're, oh, good, they're going to school in yeah. New Zealand or Japan or whatever. But uh, they need some advice to say, no, 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 get something for your, for your effort of feeding your, feeding your champion to go over there. You know, without you, it wouldn't be them, wouldn't, they wouldn't be going there. So... Maybe we should start an agency <laughs> you know, and get those kids on contract and said, okay, here's it. You know, it's just like the agency here that, that represent yeah. uh, the football players. Exactly. And you know what, Tim, I think somebody's already on, onto that somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> We're smart people. But so, yeah, um... Go ahead. No, 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 you go, go ahead. ahead. Well, I wanted to read to you what uh, Istolo Maka is uh, saying to you. He just says, uh, hi, Paya. Never forget the Olympic medal you make. You make us all tongue and very proud. Eh? Yep. Yep. And, um, yep. you know, to me, eh, Baya, I think, <laughs> well, Carlo hasn't come in for a bit. So, Carlo, unmute yourself and come in, please. 
I know you, you have something to say or um, have a question for Paya. Um, well, I, I have to agree with uh, Isi. I mean, uh, you know, there was a, a uh, with Isi, uh, Istolomaka, you know, every Tongan uh, around the world was extremely proud. And I, I think everyone uh, was watching that, yeah. um, that, that goal qualifying game. You know, even myself, I, it was a, a family affair. Everyone gathered. I had my brothers, my, my first cousins, everyone was there. And we, we watched that. It was, uh, it, was a, it was a huge, you know, mm. um, you know I, saw, I saw my, my own aunties and you know, everyone was crying like, as, as if you were my, her own son. <laughs> you know, and, and you, you are um, his golden son, you mm. know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For me, I, I'm. Um, I'd like to ask. You know, I, I'd like to know about when you first picked up the glove as a young man, and mm. when when did you sort of think, okay, I'm going to have a have a go at boxing? And, um, you know, some yeah. of your. Uh, you know, I, I, I've always said that, that boxing is everyone's second favorite sport. Whether we play rugby or or soccer or fo American football. We all sit down and watch the big fight. So I, I followed boxing, um, not as my only sport. I followed because I was interested in the game itself. And of course, you know, keep doing it love and young Seiko and those sort of things going up. Um, in terms of, of boxing, my parents never wanted me to box. Um, it had a bad reputation. So I could have been exposed to it a lot earlier. And uh, sometimes I, I look back and wish, you know, what would have been had I picked it up at, had I picked it up at, uh, I don't know, 10 years old. Um, I, I had my first fight. At, I had my first boxing fight at 21, and that was only by accident. Oh, wow. uh, and um, you know, I turned pro at 26. 26, most guys are, are champions by then. Yeah. So I, I had a yes. really, really, I had a really, really late start. Late start. But you know, there's no regrets. I'm happy. I, I, um, I, uh, I was brave enough to sneak out of the house and train with my, my mom knowing. <laughs> 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 no, but. Uh, where did you uh, train? Where did you sneak off and train? Um, I, I, I wasn't joking. By that time, I was I was I was in my twenties, and uh, I think Mom decided to let me do what I wanted to do. Right. Yeah. And um, so I trained in Otara, entire Otara, Otara oh, boxing okay. gym. At the uh, from Otara. Otara? From Otara. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I grew up in Otara, and uh, nice. and then it went from there. But uh, yeah, so, but you know, for parents out there, get your kids in early <laughs> in sports. <laughs> it helps them. <laughs> well, know, is this your to, kids uh, to, uh, do you push your kids towards oh, any particular sport? No, so you know, interestingly, none of my kids are interested in boxing. I think it's because they grew up around it. It's boring <laughs> to them. They're not interested in it. Um, you know, I was just talking to Vaina to Gamala, kids, all those kids box, and David Tour's kids play rugby. I think it's because, <laughs> and my kids, are, my kids are into basketball and other things as well. But they, uh, I think, was boxing is a bit boring to them. And I don't, I don't push it. I don't push it. No. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's an honor to tonight. Yeah. The thing, the the the, the sports. You know, it's uh, as you look at it, the boxing is an individual sport. It's mm -hmm. all on you. It's all on you to make it happen, you know. Yeah, with yeah. with rugby and 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 uh, and uh, football, it's a team sport. You yeah. have to work together. Yeah. yeah, and it has to come has to come down to you, to you know, to 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 make it happen. You have to do it yourself. So that's uh, the big difference, you know, playing a team sport and being a boxer. And I've, it's all I've on you, man. Yeah, and I think it appeals to a lot of these rugby players, that individual uh, facet to it. I think it appeals to the, the gladiatorial side that yeah. we all have as, as athletes. Right. And I think that's why a lot of them decide to do boxing on the, uh, on the sides. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. And make better money than most boxers do, but uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, Mark uh, Royal. Mark Royal. Um, yeah. I get he he, he kind of calls himself Balangiloy, but anyways, <laughs> how you doing, Mark? But he writes this for you, uh, Baya. Oh yeah, wow. 
Proud of you, Toko. You were like a brother, like no other friend who wouldn't bend. A mate who was always late, a bro that was never slow <laughs> to the bar after any after game anyway. <laughs> but your quality was always the top. That's uh, uh, nice. Mark, Mark. Mark, is, Mark, Mark Rue is a very talented to play for Mate Matonga. He's a very talented uh, player. Um, yes. Somebody that I wouldn't want to be as good as uh, in rugby league, but uh, no, he's a very... He has, can't tell uh, you. has high, re high remarks for you here, man. Thank Might you. Might be a good buddy. Huh? Thanks, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> so what, you know... As we started this this page, we 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 come through a lot of boxing from mm -hmm. you know, young I mean, I I think boxing is probably the number one sport from Tonga back in the day it because was. we had, they I mean we had a lot of good boxers from Tonga. Absolutely, it is all. It is our it is officially the most successful sport we have, uh, not in numbers and, and, and so forth, mm -hmm. but in terms of success. Of success, course, there's the, yes. Of course, there's the Olympics, but uh, beyond that, we've had uh, we've had guys that went up and rank, ranked uh, professionals. Uh, we always uh, deliver when it comes to the regional games in terms of gold medals right. and everything. We, our numbers are always up there. Uh, you know, like we take free box and come back with free gold. That's the kind of success we had. Right, uh, and of course, uh, um, you know, we, we've had uh, a guy called Sonia Sipelli who went and challenged for the world title, the first time he challenged for the world title, uh, and that's so it, it's been a successful uh, sport for us. Uh, and uh, you know, like the Olympics, uh, as I said, it's, it's bittersweet. I really, 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 really hoped that we'd get uh, medals coming thick and fast by now, and and success in every other sport as well, you know. So. I was quietly hoping that Fiji wouldn't do the gold for the Olympics at the Sevens Rugby because I wanted Tonga to be the first country to get there. <laughs> Secretly, yeah. that's just between yeah. us guys. <laughs> yeah. So good on them. Good on them. They had uh, that thing set up, but uh, you know, I, I, you know, rugby is our number one game, and I hope that uh, we'd get up there, the Sevens maybe, and, and, and try and get a medal that way. But we should, we should have had medals, other medals by now. We should have had, you know, a handful of gold, of, of medalists. Possibly gold medalist by now. I think, had we um, had we followed through with the legacy of, of the medal that I won, right? Has anybody followed up? Has anybody made it to the Olympics since you? Um, we've had one qualifier, uh, but that's as far as I know. the others have been uh, what we call under the wire, where they they, they <laughs> come in to make the numbers. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and that, uh, well, we've had we've had one a couple of qualifiers and that so, but nobody. As Britain for the Olympics. Sure. Hey, Father, do you uh, do you see yourself like considering getting involved with Tongan boxing in the future, or was it just okay. a thing of the past? Okay, I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> had to, man. Uh, had to. I had, yeah. uh, I, that's not a fair, fair question. Fair question. <laughs> I, I suppose I have to answer it uh, sooner or later. I was trying to get myself involved in boxing several times. Mm -hmm. And each time I got kicked back. Each time I was, uh, each time I wasn't, uh, you know, the old saying, I bought the old saying, look, if you're going to do the same thing over and over again, hoping for a different result, you're not going to get it. You're going to get the same thing. Yeah. And what I bought was always different, always new. And I don't, I don't know, I'm working on the theory of why it's happening in Tonga, why they won't listen, why they won't take it. They listen politely, they nod. Yeah. And then do nothing else. <laughs> you smile like, hey, <laughs> you just smile like somebody who knows what I'm talking about. You yeah, know what man. I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. And, um... they're, they're, they're probably afraid of losing power. That's no, but you, no, they want they they want the under the table stuff, man. There's, there's, there's a bit of that. There's a bit of that. And uh, another another thing is, is they all nod at you, hoping you'd pull out your own wallet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, but uh, you know, I, I was looking here because I've, I've got a brother-in-law who coaches rugby here in New Zealand and the club scene, as if it would know, is, is weak at the moment. Um, it, because it's since professional, everything has been focused on developing and academies and so forth. 
yeah. the club scene in rugby here is suffering uh, to the point here in Auckland it can probably be two or three clubs that can uh, seriously can can win the, the 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 championship over and over again you know because the other clubs are so weak now um, and that comes down and I was talking to one of the coaches he said it comes down to a lot of people who who are at these clubs and they keep it their own little enclave their own little thing where they they shield it from anybody else getting involved because they don't want to lose some of it. And Tom is the same. I think with the boxing, I think with the rugby, I think with a lot of other sports, they all crowd around it because they don't want anybody else to to shine some light into some change into it. Change. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it's sad. That's what yeah. Yeah. I think that's what's in Tonga, happening in Tonga. That they need to, oh. um, you know, I say in Tonga, the administrators' faces stay the same. The athletes always changes. It means that uh, we've had right. the same administration since the 1980s. Are still there, wow. and um, I don't mind me saying that because I live here in New Zealand. They can't get me. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't owe you any money anyway. So. No. Oh. <laughs> There's a guy here named uh, Tuihi for Vavauk Carving House. Eh? <laughs> yeah. he, he just wrote under the wire, and he's laughing, holding his mouth. So. <laughs> yeah. Under the wire, you have to write in and tell me what you meant by that, eh? Please. <laughs> <laughs> under the wire. But I, I, I think that uh, for Tonga to really uh, um, open up itself, as it has to, to widen up, has to open up and let other ideas come in, and, and just be yes. brave enough to take changes and so forth. Um, you know, my experience with Tonga, uh, it's sad to say. I wasn't even registered. They wouldn't even allow me to register as a coach there. Wow! Uh, absolutely, and uh, you know, I, I I took the when I was there, I came here and arranged for coaches because at the moment, what they do is they wait for some sort of tournament to come up, which comes up every three months or so, overseas, and then they go around and they grab a bunch of boys. Yeah, some of those guys haven't had a fight yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is it is it comical, but it's it's dangerous. Yes, you know? for a fighter, yeah. Or fighter because they, you know, you don't know who they get matched up with, and right, and um, you know, and, and the coaching is terrible. Um, so what happened was, and this is why I, I didn't get registered as a trainer. I, I started up a little club of only three boys out of Hutte Hill, mm -hmm. and they wrote to me and said, "Oh, they emailed me and said, Pa, you got to bring your boys in for for camp." I said, "No, my boys just started, and uh, why should I bring them to camp? They'll probably end up fighting the same boys there." I said, no, no, everybody comes into camp. We camp and we go and then uh, we pick the team from the camp. I said, no competition? No, no competition. <laughs> I said, mm -hmm. uh -uh. So I refused to bring my boys in. And then they said, oh, no, we can't register you, your team. And so I just threw up my arm and, and thing. And, and I said, no, that, that, yeah. uh, this isn't going to happen. But, uh, but that's the situation that I was with. And, um, and people said, well, he doesn't help. I know words have come around that I don't help Tongan boxing. I don't help Tongan boxing because they won't let me help. They won't allow me to come in and I could fall into what they're doing and just comfortably go with it. Or I can just stand aside and say, well, you guys are ready for change. Let me know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's where I am with, with Tongan boxing at the moment. I'm very really much on the outside. And until the day that they, the problem is, is that the, um, the, the administration, the TASA administration, uh, I think under their charter, they can't interfere with the local federations. So I understand that they can't do anything, but maybe their, ties, their hands are tied, but it's time. I think if they wanted to, they could. Yeah. They hold the purse strings, but they won't. But again, it's that uh, uh, one of the, the thing about Tonga is that uh, it's a strength and it's a weakness. And this is only an observation I had when I was there, is that <coughs> this, this, uh, this nurturing of relationships it means that I won't say that you're bad and you won't say that I'm bad. So we end up both being incompetent. <laughs> 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 nothing is said. There's no accountability. It's just you can't like, grow. Then you can't grow. You can't, you can't grow. Nothing changes, you can't right? Grow. Nothing can't changes. Grow. Nothing, nothing changes. Yeah, that's right. right. It's funny that you say the uh, buy about boxing, how they just waiting for comp to come up and they just go out there and grab anyone. Mm -hmm. with the, it's the same thing about 2018 with the Tongan series at the World Cup. Mm -hmm. They came here to Frisco. I was just hanging around. I was all the boys from Tonga, and there was only me and other two for outsider. Mm -hmm. Then we all meet up, and the thing is, they Tonga didn't ha make the effort to go send the boys go to New Zealand. There's always a seventh comp to gain experience from the boys because mm -hmm. we we're going into the World Cup. 
mm-hmm. everybody else would just play all year round. Mm-hmm. There was only downfall of the boys because the skills and talent, we had that. We we out we can match any team that we play, but the the experience that we had, we had we were just pick them up, train in Tonga. They came to Fiji, train in Fiji for a mm-hmm. couple of mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. couple of weeks. Then they flew, flew them here. We all meet up here. Mm-hmm. But then people, the outside people just go, oh, here you go again. They just come for, just they're on holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the boys, man, come to training, everybody's fit. The skills yeah. level's up there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But Look, the only downfall, there's lack of experience that they, then by the time, they don't waste time to send the, the team over to New Zealand, Samoa, Fiji, or to give them game time so mm-hmm. they can gain experience. Right. That's the, you yeah. guys had no direction. No, no. Uh, but you, you know, know uh, back in the it. 90s, yeah. sorry. Uh, no, go ahead, go ahead. Back in the 90s, um, Gerepi Finau, who is the father of Tony Finau, the golfer. Eh? Oh. But back then in the days, um, he was trying to put a, t- uh, a team of basketball, eh? the American basketball together. Mm. And Tonga just straight out said, no, we can't have that. Yeah. So what Galepi, Galepi talked to a few people and he was um, urged on to get a hold of the uh, Pilo Levu at that time. Eh? Mm. Anyways, I guess she was the head of TASA or something like that. Eh? But anyways, Galepi got a hold of Pilo Levu, told her the idea, and Pilo Levu said, hey, if you think that we can go and compete in the, uh, what is it, Pacific? Uh, Pacific sports, Games. Huh? Yeah. Pacific Games. Yeah. Then by all means, bring the team and we'll register them as, as Thomas' team. Eh? Anyways, Gerepi put the team together and we had a whole bunch of D1 uh, college players but at that time, mm. you know? Paul so Afyak. he got, yeah, oh, yeah. Paul Afyak and all of us, Percy, um, eh? But anyways, Tonga went and went to the gold medalists mm. yeah, on, on, on those games. Yeah. But, you know, the thing that the Kerepi was, you know, just like how you uh, felt, uh, uh, Baya, yeah? mm. he felt like they want, they didn't want it. Mm. Yeah? But, you know, after that, they paid the team to go to Tonga and did a little parade. Yeah? Mm. Mm. And uh, back then, Dupotoa, uh you know, the former, uh, well, uh, our, yeah. to pull the fifth. Eh? Yeah. Anyways, at that time, he was, uh, he came on and said, you know what? You guys coming under me, Pilo Le was not involved anymore. So, you know, mm-hmm. that's when Tonga started picking up. Eh? Mm-hmm. But anyways, you know, I, I, I just want to give a big shout out to my boy, Kerepi, eh? for, Mm. For believing in these boys, eh? I wow. don't know if you guys know about the D one here, eh, 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 Baya and uh, and Carlo here, eh? but D one is there's they categorize the cut the college levels. Eh? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 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 top you can get is D one, and when the D one offers you, you are pretty good. Eh? Um, but that's how um, you know. Gerepi picked out some of these boys from them and picked up a few uh, local boys. Eh? And like I said, they went and played for the gold in, the, in those uh, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, remember, I remember that at uh-huh. the time. And, uh, you know, and uh, right, basketball should become a, a great, a, a, one of the big sports in Tonga because every Mormon church has a basketball, <laughs> has a basketball court over yes. in every village. Yeah, and so forth, and, um, and there's a lot of sports that, uh, as I said, there's a lot of talent that uh, I don't think we can ever create a team. We don't have enough people for that, but I think we can have individuals that shine, that shine anywhere around the world. Uh, and that, but uh, we just, I think, we miss too many opportunities because of the attitude, because of the structure yeah. that we have uh, over there, and it's uh, and it's sad. Yeah, it's it really sad. sad. It's sad. We want to bring in our uh, colleague here. He just. Uh, barely made it in. Uh, Istolo Maka, welcome to the panel and uh, go ahead and ask your question. I know you have something to say to Paya. You mentioned it on, on Facebook, but welcome, uh, Isi. Welcome, Isi. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> 
What about this? Wow, Gibbs. Can you hear us? Uh, Still fishing hot and hot. Maybe his mic is. <laughs> He's like Tati. He don't have his mic on. Maybe. Yeah. Let's see. So there you go, Bayer. You might have to go to the king for the boxing. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wasn't the king at that time. I. I... Togo. You. You. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Easy. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, they told me, Mike. No, no worry. No. Over the bottle. Over the Bayer. Over the bottle. Follow. Follow. Uh, I never forget the uh, the time when I was watching you. Uh, at the time, I was crying because uh, uh, you know, even though you made the the, the final, yeah. but you know, before you got to the final, we were crying because you know <laughs> you got us there. You got the whole country there, and we we're right behind you. And even the last minute, the last round, I was jumping up and I was, come on, Paya, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I never forget that. I was young at the time, but so proud. I was crying and uh, I was trying to get him to, you know, to come and say hello to you. And, and we we're like the like the role model for all of us young Tongans. Oh man! When we grew up in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. stop it! You gave me a big hit. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you're, and you're not that young, man. But <laughs> no, thank you. It's all I um, I watched you, uh, you know, play rugby and that. Over, uh, in your time, and uh, I was absolutely shocked because, you know, I, I think we have a relation. We, we go back to Hapai, don't we? Yes, of course, of course, we're all from Hapai. <laughs> There's a lot of rugby players come from Hapai. Oh, <laughs> no. I, I was in I was in California when they um when the team was uh, we had a bit of a fundraising thing, and they had uh, you know you had to call which village you're from, and and everybody from that village would come in Pagapale and everything else, and. I looked around, there wasn't too many Tungake people around, but my mother has my mother has connections with Haano. And your brother was there. And I said oh. to your brother, yeah, I said to your brother, I'm gonna call Haano, but you're gonna get all your people to come and talk about it. So he was, <laughs> I, had a good, I had a good fundraiser that night. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like they always say in Tonga, eh? Yeah? <laughs> Yeah, they get the royalty. <laughs> royalty treatment. Yeah. <laughs> you you reached your head on your father and your feet on your mother in Tonga, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, I think we can all relate to what uh, Istolo is saying. Because, eh? man, to be honest, I, you know, tears were running out my eyes. Eh? You, when when you were, uh, you know, even when you came up uh, mm. short, eh? mm. we were still mm. all so proud of you, wow. man. Uh, you know, which brings me to, you know, I haven't felt that that way until the, the Matematonga. Absolutely. A few years ago. Eh? Yeah. You know, especially when our people is singing our hymn songs. Eh? Uh, I remember the announcer was saying, let's just be quiet and listen. Eh? Mm -hmm. I mean, he, that's, that's what he said. He literally said that, you know, for, for them to just be quiet and listen. And they listened to that uh, to that hymn song that they uh, our people were singing. Man, wasn't that beautiful? You know, every hair stood. I don't have much up here, but it, it stood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, uh, that's the type of feeling that uh, I think Istolo is trying to bring on here. Eh? That man, every tongue in uh, Baya, when you was up there, yeah. I don't think there was a dry eye yeah. eh? at that moment, yeah. uh, just watching you. Uh, you know. Uh, yeah. Wearing our flag and representing, huh? and yeah. especially when you're saying tonight, you know, you you had the opportunity to represent New Zealand, eh? Yes. But you turned you turned it down, right? To go for our little country, man. That's right. that is uh, heroic, right there. Eh? And, you know, and the other thing is, you know, um, he didn't get any uh, sponsorship from Tonga or Tonga had, man. you know, given him anything to train. He did it on you did it on your on your own. Yeah. But if you did represent New Zealand, then pro you probably had some help or, you know, financially and all that I stuff. Been, I would have been, yes. well, um, I, 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 they would have taken me to tournaments yes. around the world. And, uh, yes. and Tonga did that. So that's a big part of why I went to the States to get, to get the sparring with some of the professionals over there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, 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 when, I, when I had uh, said that New Zealand I wasn't going to come to their camp, I was going to stay with Tonga. And then they they put up the thing that I had to go to live in Tonga for three months. And then I came to Tonga for three months and 
I kind of went almost regretted making the decision. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I come here? <laughs> Why, did I do this? Why did I do this for? Yeah. You know, when I came to Tonga and uh, went to our first training camp and it was one bag hanging in the hanging in an empty room. That was it. Yeah. No ring, no nothing. And um, wow. That was it. When I, in fact, when I pulled up, uh, I saw these guys were were building something because I got picked up from the airport by by a post office van. <laughs> the, the driver drove me down, and we pulled up at this uh, in Hadejo, and these guys were building what looked like a little hut. And I said, "Oh, I said, who are these guys? Said, this, this is your team." I said, "Yeah, this is your team." I said, "What are they doing? Is this like my team building exercise?" He goes, no, they're building your accommodation. That was our accommodation for the camp. <laughs> oh, wow. It was, was going to be a tent shed in the middle of town. And, uh, and then uh, our manager came by and uh, he pulled in from work. And he came up and said, don't worry about them. You'll be, um, you can come stay in the big house with me. And I couldn't do it. You know, that was my team. And I just said to the guy, no, I, I was, I was sticking out with the boys. And that night... Nobody told me about mosquitoes in Tonga. Mm. Uh, literally, the only thing I had shown was the tip of my nose because I had the blanket over my eye, over my head. Yeah, uh, and that was the start of my camping in Tonga. But what kept me there was the spirit. You know, yeah. the, they had nothing, nothing yeah. in terms of 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 of, of uh, equipment, nothing in terms of really training. Um, you know, our breakfast in the morning was uh, lessy and bread. Uh, but the, the spirit uh, was just uh, was just intoxicating, and that's what made me stay there. Was uh, was with the boys and that, and and I didn't regret one minute of it um, in that time. And 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 um, that's when I think, if you're going to represent Tonga, I think that you should go to Tonga at some point and put your feet onto the earth, yes. and uh, you know, and, and and just absorb. There is power there, I think, spiritual power. Absorb it, what it means. If you're somebody like me who grew up here in New Zealand, that there is spirit, there is power there for you to, to, to absorb from the earth of Tonga itself. Um, and um, it kept me there. That's what kept me there. Yeah. That made me fight harder. It made me train harder. And then, so and my advice for young boys who want to go to Tonga, uh, represent Tonga, go to Tonga, plant your feet on the ground and, and, and feel the power. Yeah. You know, my dad used to have this saying to the guys who, I, I, we have six sisters, huh? Mm -hmm. and he would tell every guy that came and uh, asked for one of my sisters' hands, my dad would always say, Fish, fish, you get there by five minutes before I got back at the end of my But you know, um, it's just a shame to say, and this is an honest truth by uh, what mm -hmm. you described back in those days the conditions, man, our team in Ifo, our rugby team, eh, yeah. still experiences that right now. I mean, they have no, they have to take the bus, mm -hmm. go uptown somewhere just to lift weights, eh? mm -hmm. go somewhere mm -hmm. else to do other mm -hmm. training. And then yeah. all they have is just a playing field in in, in Colorado, yeah. that's it. <laughs> and that's probably the same since the 1950s. It hasn't yes. changed much. Hasn't yes. Changed yes. Much. No development. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. uh, and you, know, you look at pictures of the 1950s and say this is similar stuff to what they've <laughs> they got now. Yeah. And that's, that can't be good. See, uh, and I'm saying that because... because uh, now it's just that... Uh, go ahead. Because all in Donga, they, all the gyms and stuff is all in Nukualofa. Mm. It's a long way for everybody in Kolovaya or Hifu to get, make their way all the way to Nukualofa to... That's the only problem, but then other than that, we we all upgraded, but then we had to travel so far to get to right. use it. There's, a, there's another thing that I noticed when I was in Tonga in terms of rugby is that uh, when I was remember growing up, uh, rugby was very much village based. You played for where you came from. Yeah, I noticed there's a lot of teams now mixed, and I don't know whether that's, that's a good thing or a bad thing, but um, especially when you've got the old boys teams, you know. And so you get people from other villages coming in and you may have only six people play for that village and the rest is from outside. And whether, I don't know whether that strengthens it or whether it weakens the, the club competition. I mean, uh, I remember if you're playing for, you know, for Fo'ui or Hihifo, 
you'll die by that. You know, that you'll, you'll, you'll mate, yeah. mate, 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 you will whatever village you're from. And I don't know whether that can be sustained, whether it affects the actual competition itself, do you think? Let me say this in here. As I'm saying, they go from Kolowai uptown to lift weights. Eh? Mm. That guild just down the street has weight room. So they won't, go, they, they won't go there. <laughs> they won't <laughs> go all the way uptown just to lift weights. Eh? Uh, I mean, that's how bad it is as far as that goes. Uh, by, uh, no, no, I mean, no London, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I hear thank you. Thank you is really stacked with everything. Eh? I mean, uh, uh, but yeah, the bus would just keep going uptown and don't even stop with thank you. Eh? Sorry, thank you. Eh? <laughs> Fue, fue guy, eh? yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Istolo just came in, so we'll allow him to to ask another question, please. <laughs> Uh, just, just to to add up to what uh, Paya was saying, um, just in terms of uh, uh, rugby players playing for the villages, and one and the other clubs have so many players from other villages. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the old boys one is always strong, stronger than the villages team. Mm. Uh, the other thing, like Hifo, Hifo is not just one village; it's the combined of all Hifo. Mm -hmm. So what they do, they nominate all the good players from every villages and yeah. put in the Hivo team. So Hivos will always be strong. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when you come to the villages team, maybe you have four or five good players, but the rest, uh, uh, you know, they're not right up there. That's the problem with in Tonga. Mm -hmm. Because Hivo will always be strong mm -hmm. because uh, I don't know how many villages in, in Hivo, maybe six or eight. You know, they, they pick all the good players and, and they want to go and play for Hifo. So that's what I, I just want to say something about that. And, yeah. and even the old boys, you know, the old boys, they're all coming from different uh, villages too, different college. Yeah. Um, yeah. The old boys and Hifo will always be strong, better than, than, than the villages team or the clubs. Yeah. Yeah, they're just... Uh, yeah. yeah, no, no, I get that. So they're becoming like a regional team rather than the actual... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I, I can't just, yeah. yeah. Just, just in defense of it, one way to look at it is, oh, sorry. Go ahead. One way to look at it is, if you're a good player and you want to be seen, you got to go and play for a bigger team. Of course. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's, that's one point. If you want to yeah. get out there and make a name for yourself, you got to go play, play for a bigger team. Other yeah. than that, if you're just, uh, if you're a right player, then you just stay and play for your village. Yeah. That, that'd oh, be yeah. one of the reasons why people leave the village to go play elsewhere, those big teams. Yeah. And I remember when I was a kid, uh, the police was always a very, very strong team because, as you said, the police doesn't come from a village. It combines some other people as well. So that's why they're always a strong team. I don't know whether they're still alive or around or not, but, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. But uh, I just wanted to say, in defense of evil, what, you, what is Tolomaka is saying, huh? it is two miles from Fo'ui to Hatafu. Eh? Two miles. Oh, yeah. So... Every time when they say welcome, you say well over here, then come to Havatolo. Eh? Well in uh, Fauia, then we'll come to uh, <laughs> Havatolo. Eh? I mean, that's how small those little towns are. Right. But um, like I said, TQ has has their own team now mm. eh? and, and for, for years now. Uh, Fahefa has their own team. Eh? So right now, it's just a combine of Fauia, Havatolo, Kolowai, Aha is not even there, but uh, I cannot fall in uh, in hot tough. I, I mean, oh. very little towns. Eh? But um, but I I, I see uh, what Istolo is saying, and it's very true. Eh? Yeah. There's always a like what like I mentioned the D one. Eh? D one schools will always have because of the recruits. Yeah. Eh? They will always have the upper hand on the recruits because they can recruit from Isn't Florida right? all the way to California. Eh? Where these uh, smaller schools, they just have the luxury of picking sometimes from their own state, maybe another state next to them. Eh? But um, you know, uh, you know, like Tolo, uh, the old boys, what uh, Tolo is saying, eh? they are very, very strong because man, they have the pick of the litter from pretty much everywhere. Eh? Welcome, Siwaki. Yes, welcome, Coach. Oh, what's up, man? Hey, all right. Hey, sorry, I'm, uh, I just saw the invitation. Uh, an honor to oh, be yeah. here. Fire, man. 
And uh, you, you, you know, I just want to add on real quick. I think Paya said something that is very uh, deep here about losing the pride of playing for your villages. You know, honestly, you can't, you can't match the pride of playing for your own hometown with being an all-star team or a mixed team. You know, there's not, yeah. there's no place called um, old boys, you know, uh, Toloa old boys or whatever old boys. There's no specific uh, identification of a hafeitu. Uh, you know, it could be anywhere. Um, and Bill, you know, Mote, uh, it's it's the same here, Kahuku St. Louis. Yes. yes. Uh, you know, they can't match up that the uh, the pride. You know, before Mate Matonga paint red the audience of any feel, uh, you know, it's similar to Kahuku, but, uh, but when we win the state champion, we come home to a community where yes, we yeah. can celebrate and feel the pride and the young kids, babies grow up wanting to be a Red Raider, you know, or yeah. but when you grow up to, to a team that is uh, a name that does not, uh, you know, accompanied by a, 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 a village or a fahinga fituu, there's not, there's no deep pride in there. Honestly, I can just say that right now. You know, and it's not fair because it's an all star. But yes, Paya was right. It's rooted when it's a timia hateho, a timia, you know, a mafanga. You know, doesn't matter how much you accomplish, but uh, but you have that pride and. You know, you can feel every bit of it. And I'm sure Paya uh, mentioned when he was to represent Tonga. Oh, man, that's a, that's a huge thing. You can feel it, you know. That's why those guys, I guess. Uh, but anyway, sorry, just adding my two cents. I was enjoying listening to those <laughs> great points. <laughs> no worries. Uh, Istolo and uh, Paya, yeah. uh, this is uh, Coach Siwaki Levi, yeah? Yeah. He's big names here in the U.S. Eh? Uh, Siwaki is uh, the first Tongan coach in the high school level to win multiple um, championships eh? oh. here in America. And, and he's known for that. Uh, he retired way too early, in my opinion, but uh, he has his own reasons. But uh, he's one of our successful coaches out here. And he has coached many boys that has gone on to the NFL level. Yep. Eh? Yep. Uh, Tim Mano Hill is one of his pupils. Eh? Oh, so, wow. yeah, yeah. Uh, Coach Siwaki here has uh, had a hand in, in a lot of people's careers. Eh? I just yeah, wanted yeah. to bring that to you guys. Uh, oh. Go ahead. Oh. Wonderful, wonderful. Anybody has any questions? I uh, just wanted to. Um... You know, when the, they played the Ukraine uh, national anthem. Um, but, you know, I, I had a special feeling when I was seeing the Tongan flag fly up, up against, you know, those other big developed countries. Yeah. You know, and um, I just wanted to ask, you know, what, what was going through your mind during that time? How were you feeling? And, you know, who, who were you uh, thinking of? when your flag uh, was going up? I, um, I didn't even hear the Ukrainian National Anthem, to be honest. I, 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 maybe it was psychological, but I just blocked yeah. everything out. All I saw was the flag. All I was looking yeah. was at the flag. And I pretended for that moment, that was me. Uh, there was a flag was the top one. But uh, yeah. at the moment, at that time, I, I thought of my journey. I thought of um, uh, where I'd come from and, and, uh, and the people, as I said, the people that were there. You don't do these things by yourself. Um, you know, you always owe a lot and you stand on the shoulders of many others, um, whether it be well known or just, um, you know, for example, I, I don't know why, but I thought of a guy who um, in Tonga, when we were camping in Tonga, we were walking to Del Paiva from town where we were at. And uh, a guy pulled up and, and, and a guy pulled up in his car and gave us a ride into Hatejo. Um, I don't know how it was a long, long walk otherwise, but I thought of him. And, I, and when I came back on the plane in Tonga, I wanted to sort of see where, if I, I don't even remember what he looks like. It was just a stranger. Mm. And I just wanted to see if, I, if he'd come up to me and, 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 um, and, and, and you know, and just say hi. But uh, 
I don't know why I felt I follow that. It's a strange thing to say, but uh, no, but it's, it's not strange at all. It's not it's, strange at all. It's 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 a little thing. It's a little things. I um I didn't want to see the officials and all the guys in suits meeting me at the airport. I wanted to see that guy. Right. And <laughs> and that's the first time I've, I've ever owned up to that. Um, I, I think well, we all fall into that category, yeah, when no. we are maybe presented with an honor of something, eh? And you think of, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's the little things, the you know, that, that comes up, eh? Mm -hmm. Of course, mm. the, the obvious people is there, eh? But you, no. you no. won't forget the, you know, like what you said, this guy just picked you up, eh? So, yeah. Picked up. Yeah, uh, and I know in all sorts of invitations for all sorts of openings and all sorts of uh, of um, occasions come to you uh, out of the blue, and um, and sometimes I, I I wouldn't want to go, and my mother, of course, to Dahi, you know, to, to keep up the appearance of being wanted me to go to every single one of them, and uh, so we used to have me and my mum had a love hate relationship, <laughs> so we had a little bit of an argument over it. <laughs> um, I was pretty headstrong. I thought, you know, mom, the people I know, I know, I need to know. I know already. I don't need to be going around all this sort of stuff. Mm. Um, but I understood that I also had a responsibility that uh, to, to to have, have the success. I, I do well. I have a responsibility, and perhaps I owe something to in itself to give back. And and um, and perhaps it's not up to me to always make those decisions. And so forth, but um, as I said, but when I thought about the uh, the moment of the of the flag, no, I didn't hear the, the Ukrainian national anthem. I didn't <laughs> see anything else. I, I just looked at the flag going up, and that was it. That was all I I I, um, I remember thinking about. I remember, it's all I remember about it. Yeah, and I admit you were the the most. Ha it looked like as if you won gold because you were the happiest. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. You were celebrating. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? It's not the medal. Um, to me, that was always a little uh, a bonus. It was just the experience of of, of going yeah. to the Olympics. It always has been, and that's why I wasn't too keen. I wasn't looking to come back to Tonga and be a hero. I just want to take my family. But I've suffered for enough six months where I had no work. My wife worked all. And uh, I just wanted to take him out and, and uh, thank them for, for for their sacrifice. And uh, yeah, that, that was that, that's what I um, I wanted. Well, the to kids do. the kids really didn't care. You won a silver medal. They just wanted to go to Disneyland. <laughs> you know, I think they threw the middle aside when I showed it to them. You know, where, yeah. where's Mickey Mouse? Yeah. Um, and that, and uh, yeah, so. But um, but I had a great team also for from Tonga. They allowed me to pick my manager. They allowed me to pick my coach and so forth. And um, uh, to me, uh, a guy called Joe Matere, who he, he was a bit of a legend in Tonga. Um, he was the, I wanted to be my manager because he um, he didn't talk boxing, didn't talk sports. He just kept me, um, he kept me not thinking about the games at all. So he was my roomie, he was my roommate. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, he was, a, he, he was a great influence in terms of just keeping me calm and and not uh, not think about the fight so much because you know when you're when you're fighting it's so much pressure you just want to take a little time away from it all. Yeah. And then uh, he was a car, he's a guy that uh, made me think of other things rather than the sports. So were you, you know, married, uh, with kids? Uh, you you were during your career you were boxing. Uh, you know how did you manage to? Um, you know, I, I, job yeah. I had done everything upside back to front. I I got married, had kids, and then. And then took a boxing. Took a Usually boxing. the other way around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think I went to boxing because I, I I didn't make the uh, the national rugby league. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, you know they had they had big things about running, passing, and tackling. Uh, you know it was overrated stuff I thought, but they wanted somebody who could do that. <laughs> so I um I know but boxing as I see was just a fitness gimmick for me, and although I liked it. And my first fight was by accident. Uh, to be honest, I went to the went to a tournament, and uh, there was one guy who was a super heavyweight. And Tony said, "Why don't you give it a shot?" I said, "Yeah, why not?" And that's how I got into boxing. Otherwise, I would have just gone back into rugby league. So, uh, life is about uh, it spins on a dime, doesn't it? Uh, yep. I could have easily turned a different chance. corner. Yeah, yeah, turned a different corner. And when I won the fight, I liked it, and I decided to have a second one, and so on. And um, uh, and that's how I got, I got into boxing. Like, 20 fights like, later, huh? 20 nice. fights later. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> what else did you, uh, you talking about how you had Joe Matale 
to get your mind off uh, off the boxing. Yeah. Well, what else did you do other than on your free time to get your mind off uh, off uh, boxing on your day uh, off? Or okay, in the Olympics itself, um, I I wanted to come in ten days early into the Olympics. And everybody in, the, in my team was worried that I was taking time, 10 days off training off. And uh, I, I said to him, listen, I, I feel, I didn't know, but I said, I feel like I should go there early because I didn't want to go there and be uh, overwhelmed because I knew how big the Olympics was going to be, especially in Atlanta. Yeah. I, do, I wanted to get there. I wanted to get there and I wanted to look at it, experience it, and then relax. Come fight time, I, I, I'm used to the environment. And so I said, book me for 10 days early. Everybody said, no, no, you can't. You've got 10 days of training you'll be missing out on. I said, we can train there. But we want him inspiring. I said, I, don't I need to be there early. So I claimed down early. And I was right. I got there. I traveled around the village. I got to meet people. I saw all the sites and everything. Um, and then come the competition starts, I was relaxed. There was nothing else I needed to do. I was focused only on the competition. Um, and then you had Joe. Joe was a guy who, who told a lot of jokes, a lot of risque stories. <laughs> basically, he was telling his history. Basically, it was history. It was. You, you, you guys, you know, you guys know Joe, Joe, Joe my dad, Joe, my dad, he my, some of the older people. Yeah. 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 He's my relative, yeah. so yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. He's a legend. He's a legend. Uh, yeah. that, that, that guy's a legend, man. He's a legend. Uh, uh, I love that's him. Hanos. That's Hanno's uncle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, in fact, in fact, I've got a story to tell. I, I, I hope that uh, he doesn't mind up in heaven me telling the story. Okay, he was our manager, right? He's our manager, and uh, I was fighting in the uh, quarterfinals, which means that I've won the quarterfinals. I've been to the I've got a bronze. I've been the semis. It will take you into the to the silver and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so I won the I won I beat the Cuban and got into the middle rounds. So I was guaranteed the middle. And Joe and I were, and he was strangely quiet. Everybody else was whooping and whooping and rolling around the ground. Thomas, one guy had ripped off all his stupendus and everything and was running around <laughs> half naked. Um, so on a bus back to the village and Joe was sitting in his little white bag that he's always carrying with him next to me. And we're traveling around. He's very quiet. And I thought, he's, he's quiet for, for, for a manager who's just basically won a medal and he's not saying much. And he says to me, leans over and he says to me, Maya, now, Joe's a Mormon. Well, you know, it was. <laughs> and he says to me, he goes, I said, no, Joe, I've already got a medal. I've got the bronze. He goes, hey? This is the manager. Says, yeah. Oh, yeah, wait, oh, yeah, wait, oh, yeah, wait. He reaches in and pulls out a vodka <laughs> from his bag. <laughs> and he starts, he starts drinking. So what did anybody tell me so I can celebrate? So said, that's why everybody was rolling around the ring. And I came back and uh, that's a story my Joe. I always like to tell it. That's the kind of guy he was. He was always a... Uh, uh, and, and also, I mean, um, you know, we talk about the, the you know, sponsoring the, the thing. And the guys in boxing, it's a, it's a poor man's game. And, and, and the committee that was in Tonga at the time, was always reaching into their pocket, and uh, and, and I've got to I've got to mention that because um, nowadays everybody wants to, to go to the government, everybody wants to go out there and thing. But guys like Joe, uh, uh, Mrs. Fifita, um, all those guys who were involved in boxing in my time had always reached into their pockets all the time. And um, in fact, uh, when I was when I was um, uh, left my left my job, Joe had pulled up and asked. You know, what, what are you doing to feed your family? I said, oh, my wife's working. And uh, he reached into his bag and he pulled out an envelope and said, take this to, to, to feed your kid with, to, to, to help nice. out. Nice. And when I looked down at the envelope, we had Tongan boxing team, um, Tongan boxing team, that was the money for our food and I think for Australia, for the green. And uh, I said, no, Joe, this is, for the, this is for the team. I can't take this. And he said, take it. Don't worry about it. I'll look after it. And uh, when I did qualify, the first person I picked for my team was Joe, <laughs> because he was uh, because of, of, of what he did there. But but um, you know but that, that's that's the, the love and the offer that administrators had at that time 
and uh, you know they, they, they always give out of their pocket. Um, I'm not saying that that shouldn't be helped them otherwise, but that was they came in knowing that they were not going to make any money out of it, but it's purely for love, and it's it's um, um, it's altruistic love. It's a love beyond self, which is a very much a Tongan a Tongan trait, I think. Yes. Very much a Tongan trait, the love beyond self uh, of giving, and and we and we saw that. When the queen opened up her carriage at the, to the London rain, to be in the same rain as her people, we saw that with Akris uh, Hiva uh, picking up rubbish on the streets of Tonga. Uh, we saw that with the Tupo Nima giving up his uh, royal uh, executive privilege. And I think if we can just find and, and, and live by that credo, um, I think the Tonga sports and Tonga society and politics will go a long way, I think. Um, that's my little two cents worth from our politics in Tonga at the moment. So, wow, that's deep. That. That's yeah. deep, brother. <laughs> that is really yeah. deep. <laughs> you, know, so. you know, adding uh, adding into Joe a little experience. Uh, as many people as you know, my uh, Ikonga here. You know, little did I know about boxing, but uh, growing up, uh, I think Mote Tim and uh, Bill can relate. Uh, and in our high school, we had a few Tongan boys in uh, 1974. For a week, But anyway, Kakoe. I was forced into boxing. 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 I was in Makiki Honolulu. But what I'm a big one if I'm out, you know, the Ulagi Mari, the Eloto Mari, a fool, and the Lampaya, usually that's the way. But Mamma Tony, okay, go now, forget them go, yeah. Where you tell her Tahaga go now, no two get on. But what I have given you, or fool, get out, I fool, I go out of Tuki Hologa, I know. But anyway, and Tony can tell the story a lot. Gagu, Mago. I love a Mosino, the Fuhuka, a tare, the Obesia, and I'm a fool, let your life, two box, hilly behuma. But anyway, it was a, and you know, a story, a Kuhanga coughing at Tony Kefuhu. And he finally, finally did. But that was 1980 before he moved to to uh, Arizona. But anyway, Ohoko at the Fuhu. But in the late 80s, I come with, with Tony to Tonga to some of the training. And uh, you know, but anyway, Kako Joan, I help out. You know, there was a lump sum of money. I don't want to go into detail. I was training. I was Magi Eva Mamma Tony Man, I was in dear, who gave five patoloi for who After the way in, I don't want to mention name, but you guys probably know, but Kagito Vai for who, how we had those black time. So mm. meaning was his was front by any dear. Was yeah. he, was he... <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I always wondered what was in that little bag that uh Bayer was referring to, huh? Eh? Uh, One talking? day he went yeah. at Go House for a shield. He had three different combs, a hairbrush, and all the free sample colognes that you go into stores and get. <laughs> that's what he carried in there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the, the beard tied. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how he got that bottle of liquor to fit in there, but <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. Yeah. Anyway, Stolo, who am I? Uh, 
just a question for Paya. Um, you know, um, uh, as a coach, I'm, I'm very emotional. Every time I hear the Tongan uh, national anthems uh, sing anywhere, whether sports, rugby or boxing, it always makes me cry. Um, before the, the, you know, the, um, you, you, you fought for the, f um, medals, the gold medals. And, uh, did you know that the whole countries or, um, you know, right behind you hoping that we get a gold medal, but yeah. it doesn't matter, you know, about the gold medal, you are there, you knew you were going to get one, but, yeah. you know, for us, uh, we're just, we were just crying. You got, the, you know, you were there. Um, whether you get the the gold or silver, you know, we, you know, but you know, just asking, like, did you know that the whole country, everyone was behind you? I, I, I did. I got a, I got a, um, I got a whole bag of mail, of emails, of um, messages that was came that came in. I tried to read as much as I can, and um, and uh, you know, radio stations were calling up. Uh, from from Tonga, uh, you know, so I knew there's something happening there. So I think there's something big, and um, you know, but to be honest, I um, I didn't want it to be any different from any other tournament I went to, and um, you know, and there was and then the, the press started chasing me around a lot, so I had for a couple of days I took off out of the village and, and stayed in a hotel where my wife and kids were. Just, just because I didn't want to, I didn't want to be distracted by by by, by the, all the pressing. And but I knew that something big was happening. And um, but as I said, it's, it's something I had to keep in perspective because it wasn't why I did the thing for it. It was something that's distracting rather than um, rather than motivating was distracting. Uh, as far as I was concerned, I, I just needed to do the things that I needed to do. I thought, and and and. Um, Probably the, the biggest fight for me was not the final. The most pressured fight, the one that I really felt the pressure for was when I fought the Cuban, because they, um, when we first came in, Cuba has never lost um, uh, the, the one gold and super heavy all the way through the history of the, of the Olympics. And um, so everybody was trying to avoid the Cuban and hoping not to get drawn. And I got drawn in the same pool as the Cuban. And... Um, to me, that was that was a pressure fight because the talk was that, uh, in fact, every 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 competition they print something out in the paper that morning, or a couple of days before, and said, "Come on Tuesday, uh, the Tongan and the Cuban will be fighting," uh, and then they had the little uh, prediction, and the prediction was, if the Tongan is still standing after three rounds, that will be an upset. And I took the little piece and I cut it up and I put it on the wall and and for two days I woke up and looked at it. It's a motivation, right? <laughs> uh, motivation, but the strange thing was, and it got me a little worried, is that um, it got Tony a little worried, is that on the day of the fight I woke up and I just felt absolutely nothing. There was no fear, no anger, uh, nothing at all. It was just, it was just a clear feeling. Uh, everything was bright and clear to me. And it wasn't until later when I talked to a sports psychologist and he said the athletes, athletes experience that feeling once in their, in their career. <laughs> and wow. I never knew that once in their career, they, they, wow. they, 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 they clear it, something so clear. And, 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 yeah. um, and so I went to that fight that morning and Tony would say to me on the way through to the, to the bus, he said, you okay? And I said, yeah, why? And he goes, I'm worried that you're not worried. And I said, I struck my shoulders. I didn't know what I was feeling. And so when I fought the the Cuban, um, it was it was a hell of a fight. It was uh, um, I was told, yeah, I was I was told to uh, to get in the, the the actual idea of me getting underneath the Cuban because he was tall, and try and, and work him to the body. And I, I I felt like that wasn't the right thing to do. Both my coaches were telling me get in underneath him. He's got long arms and work him. I just thought that was the wrong thing. And I made my decision that I was going to molly tonga his head. His head. <laughs> <laughs> the, the simple, the, the simple uh, thing was Cubans are very rhythmic fighters. Once they get into the rhythm, it's very hard to get them out of it. You know, the long jab and the right hand, yeah. long jab, right hand cross, long jab, right hand cross. And I felt if I could just crack him one good shot, that'll pull him up his game. But it started before then. I mean, we were in the dressing room 
I heard like a machine gun was going off on the next room, padding. It was bah, 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 nonstop. And so I told Tony, get up, Tony. And Tony said, why? I said, I'm going to work the pad and answer him back. And then Tony says, Mahalo olo pena ke helai. Mahalo olo pena ke helai. So I sat down again, but I still felt like he was he was intimidating me. So I jumped up and I grabbed the pad and I worked out, walked over to the wall and I was slamming it against the wall as fast as I can. This would make him think that I was also punching the pad as well. And then um, and then he came into the ring and he'd he'd jump over the rope. He wouldn't he wouldn't uh, step through the ropes. Yeah. He actually just came and just jump over the rope. He was that tall. And <laughs> <I did. laughs> it was all psychological. <laughs> it was all psychological warfare. Yeah. So I came. I looked at the rope. I said, "I'm not going to make it if I jump. <laughs> I'm just going to step through the ropes." <laughs> but I do notice that when they when you come to shake hands in the middle of the ring before you go back and come out and fighting, that he always comes and crosses his hands like this towards you, right, right. Uh, in the middle of the ring. Mm. And so I thought, okay, that's that's where I'm going to try and get him off his game. So I ran up to the middle of the ring before they called in, and I stood there with my hands crossed like this. <laughs> so that, those little things, those little things. Eh? So he came along, yeah. and I could see he didn't quite know. Well, so he did it back. I <laughs> oh, so he's beat me to it. What do I do? So anyway, he goes back into the ring, and then um, the plan was to crack him as hard as I can. So I came back and he saw the fight. I was following him around and I cracked him a good shot. And uh, he stood back and he adjusted his headgear. Like he wasn't hurt, I thought. But when he stood back, when his headgear was nice and straight, he adjusted it. And I thought, he's hurt because his headgear is straight. So that's when I attacked him and, and put an eight count on him on the, on the ropes. Um, unfortunately, I ran out of gas from then on and uh, I didn't come back to finish off with that shit off. But, I came back to the to the thing, and then I thought I could just keep him on that one, be enough for me. And that was enough, keep him off his game, uh, and so that worked, and I'm happy for that. But uh, it was a that to me was probably my best fight of the of, of the thing because you gotta yeah. go do that psychology stuff, huh? It's all yeah. psychology, yeah. It's something I planned on, yeah. Uh, but only because I, 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 you know, in fact, when I came in the next morning, and I could get it, I was getting a bunch of the breakfast, getting a bunch of breakfast. And I could hardly walk. My shoulders and that were, were, were done. And, and the Cuban team was in there, but not the not the guy I was fighting. And they and they sort of still speaking English, but they sort of give me the thumbs up. It was a good fight. And then uh, through another guy who spoke uh, Spanish, he asked, "Did you ice your? Did you ice your body? Did you jump into an ice bath?" Right. And I suddenly realized what he meant was that after the fight, I should have jumped into an ice bath. Ice. Yeah. But nobody knew that in the Tong team. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, yes, 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 I've, I've done the ice bath just so I can say the embarrassment. <laughs> but that's the level of experience that we were at at the moment, at that time. You know, no yeah. one has been that far. Wow. Uh, I, I, I think that's what uh, also made you a crowd favorite. Yeah, I think caused a big upset, you know, against the kid. Yeah. Yeah. There's a. Uh, I wanted to uh, ask you if you can talk a little bit about uh, the Pacific Games. I know you were an important, um, you know, uh, influence in in getting the game, and, and mm. Mm. You know, I particularly liked some of the things you talked about in your letter in regards to uh, the Pacific Games, um, a, a canoe in the sand. So maybe you can uh, talk a little bit about. Well, that you had. Yes, Carlo. And look, it's um, the canoe in the sand. You know, it's a, it's safe, but it's not. You know, canoes aren't meant to be sitting in the sand. Means that we have to be daring. We have to be um, be unafraid to try something new. You know, to 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 to, to try things. It's uh, because we've, we've done the same thing and nothing's worked. And it was just uh, to go for us to channel how our ancestors came to Tonga, how our ancestors traveled and got an empire. And I think that's lost in our, in our leadership at the moment. Um, it's the steering that we need to do to, to go out there and, and try to, and it's sometimes it's not even new. For example, um, uh, I've been trying in terms of uh, getting all these buildings that we get in Tonga. There's getting into politics a little bit here. All these buildings that come into Tonga and um, we build it and then the people leave and there's no lesson for us. 
we don't learn anything from it, or we get a building which we neglect and treat badly because we don't feel anything for it. And now when I used to go and fight for Tonga uh, against an Australian in a stadium that was bought by Australians, you know what I mean? I said, here I am trying to fight these guys or, or, or fight for this country that was in a hall that was built by that country. You know, as a person who's wearing the Tongan flag, you want to be proud. You want to, you want to be out there and stand on, on the ground, as I said, and feel this is, this, we did this ourselves to get here and not any help from anybody else. But we always stand with our cap in our hand asking for things all the time. And, that, and as, just speaking as somebody who's wearing the, the double piece, I, I, um, you know, I just want to feel some independence, some, some, some individual pride that we've done things ourselves. Now, in terms of South Pacific, uh, again, it really exposed to me how bad things are in Tongan sports. We went to bid for the games in 2012. We won. We came back. And that's all anybody had stopped thinking about. All they thought was, okay, we'll win the game and nothing else behind there after that. They didn't think of how we were going to fund it, how we were going to uh, prepare the athletes for it. So we came back and um, there was nothing. And uh, so not even the committee was, was already chosen. And we came to South Pacific Games in, uh, in 2015 in Papua. We came as the nation that was going to host it next. So we should have come in there strong and robust and ready to win. We came there and half our team was left at the airport because they didn't pay the airfare. I was there as I was there. I was there as part of the Australian uh, broadcasting people, so I wasn't part of the Tongan team. So I shot down to the to the uh, to the games village and looked for uh, one of the uh, Tasa guys. I met up to him, and I said, "What is happening? How embarrassing! The Samoans and the Tahitians are laughing at us. We're the next host, and, we, and half our team aren't here." I asked him, why are you here? You're the administrator. And he said, well, the, the deal was that I called a third from the government, a third from TASA, and a third that the Federation had to get themselves. And I said, okay, so who fell short? I said, the, 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 the Federation couldn't pay for themselves. I go back to my question, why are you here? I said to him, I was getting angry at the time. I said, why are you here? Who are you, you going to compete? So anyway, the government apparently uh, decided that they're going to fund the rest of the team and, they, and that uh, they, the, the team manager come over. They come over and you had uh, our, de our, our relay team. One guy was wearing white shorts. One guy was... These are little things which actually... Right. And, and, and it, points, it points to something that's wrong. Yeah. One guy had red shorts. One guy had white shorts. One guy had black shorts. That's our relay team, right? The, the pole vaulter didn't have a pole vault. <laughs> Man. We laughed. We laughed, but I wanted to. I wanted Man. to cry. I wanted to cry. Oh, that's, sad. that's sad, man. That's you know? sad. Our nipple. This is the truth. Our nipple team. Our nipple team had their uniform delivered on the day of competition. Right. They put them on. The girls couldn't. They played in their uniforms. But everyone had to keep pulling their thing because it was too small. You know what I mean? They were jumping yeah. around and pulling their dresses down at the same time. And that's when I decided to go work for Tonga. I asked her, listen, I need to come, even though I'm, I'm part of the, of the committee, organizing committee. Um, I've never been involved. I've never been invited to be involved. But I, I, look, this is embarrassing. I need to come and help out. And that's when I came down and I found things are worse than what I thought it was because they just... Um, that nobody wanted to change. And the Boxing Association wouldn't register me. And that's where we are. And, 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 and um, well, you look at the Matematonga, look how the great things are brought to us. And it's basically being ruined. You know, and there's, yeah. and one must have one friend, that's what he said to me, see, Baya, that's why Tongans can't have nice things. I told him, shut up. But, um, <laughs> but I, I took what he meant. <laughs> And that's the situation we are, and I think it needs a lot of change. It needs a lot of, um, 
uh, not that superficial, and I think it needs some something major. Whether it will come in my lifetime, probably not. But at least we can try and go down that direction because it's these little these little things, they point to a bigger thing. And uh, and uh, and that's and I think it goes back to politics, and the politics needs to change for the sports to change because sports is just a byproduct of politics. Mm. Yeah. Well, let me read this to you uh, since you mentioned our Samoan brothers. This is a Samoan brother uh, who apparently you sparred against his brother, but mm. this is what he says: It's uh, Akere Akere Marisala Thompson. Eh? Mm -hmm. Anyways, this is what he said. Uh, I'm not tonguing, but uh, but Baia made plenty of us Samoans from Otara extremely proud. I used to watch him spa my older brother and felt proud that he represented all of us. Absolutely. He's a clever man too, not just a sportsman. I enjoyed reading his articles on Pacifica magazines. Fafetai. Thank you. But, uh, that's from one of our Samoan brothers. Uh, yeah. at, you know, during your your career or your uh, Olympic you know, days. Eh? Yeah, well, you know, at the Olympics, um, when I when I got through to the middle rounds, I was no longer Tongan. As far as the Pacific concerned, I was uh, I was an Oceania athlete, and all the yeah. Samoan, American Samoa, the, the two Samoas, yeah. all the other nations, uh, Vanuatu. They all go right back behind me, and I, I really felt the brotherhood, and and um, and it's uh, you know the Pacific got got together, there and I was happy. I was happy. I was happy to that they took part in. I was happy to be a part of Oceania, and that, and so I I I, uh, I was glad that they came and board. And in fact, the first guy to give me money was a guy from American Samoa, so he he holds a special place. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the boss of American Samoa team. Yes, you know one thing I do oh, is yeah, I post a lot of. A lot of sports uh, posters there, eh? mm -hmm. but the during the Matematonga uh, run a few years ago, mm -hmm. uh, man, most of my Samoan brothers, eh? a guy named Bradley, uh, Bradley and I, who mm -hmm. played in the NFL a little bit, mm -hmm. but uh, his son is also at the Detroit, uh, Dallas Cowboys right now. Eh? Yeah. But uh, anyways, he was one of the. Uh, Samoans that came in and wrote, I mean, Bradley just said, you know, we are all extremely proud of our Tongan brothers today for what mm -hmm. they did. This is when they beat Australia. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and he said, um, we have tried for so many years and came out unsuccessful. Yeah? But this time, at least one of us this is what he said. At least one of us did it. Yeah, and yeah, we are yeah, all extremely yeah. proud. So it, it goes to what you're saying. Yeah? During those times, I mean, all of you athletes out there, mm -hmm. yeah? Istolomaka, uh, Fetu, yeah, Tim, yeah, yeah? Yeah. Uh, Coach, yeah? when you guys are performing up to that high level, we are no longer just tongue. Yeah? Our good. whole South Pacific uh, Islanders, yeah? They, we get together and, and cheer you guys on. Eh? So I think, you know, adding to the, you know, the, the Methodist uh, hymn songs that, that they sing during the games. Eh? I mean, those are the type of things that, you know, w with us Polynesians, now that you guys know, eh? mm -hmm. now that you guys know when you guys go out, man, hey, it's not just Tongans is looking. Eh? It's every Absolutely. Pacific Island. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Absolutely, man. It's just... Uh... In fact, you know, when, when you play another team, then especially here when you play another team, there's a Polynesian on there. I mean, you sought them out after the game or before the game to go say hi and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Because, you know, that Polynesian connection, it's, it's very strong. It doesn't <clears> matter, <throat> you know, who you are. It's, you know, especially in the NFL, it's, you know, there's maybe one or two guys in, uh, yeah. in the team that, you know, after the game, you saw the mob and say, hey, good game, or even exchange, you know, jerseys yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, that's the connection we have with the Polynesian in the islands. And I have and the, the experience, <coughs> experience we had with that, with the, with rugby, Tolo game brought for this over in Europe. Man, we we run across uh, Fiji and someone first time we run across Pop, and, and we act like that we, we know each other. <laughs> 
ever mm. since knee high. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. absolutely right. It's the yeah. special yeah. of their, yeah. Uh, yeah. Us, us, the culture is, and yeah. we, we show up to, even when we come to watch the, the World Cup, we don't play. The first mm. thing we want to watch is, oh, we check on SVG playing right now, who they playing. Is Samoa playing, who they playing, we want to watch them. Right. And every other team, yeah. they come second. But yeah. with dollar, dollar being in France and the experience we have, first time shake hand and we act like we, we grew up together. <laughs> That's and, and true. Love it. like, yeah. it's, it's like they're everywhere in the Europe. So. Yeah. That's right. You know, I, I, I go to the Las Vegas uh, sevens a lot. Eh? And where we're at, you know, most of the American fans are at, it's just us. Eh? You see the Fijians here, Samoans here, Tongans, uh, we just everywhere. But anyways, I made it around the stadium. Man, I, I looked over there, there's a whole bunch of white people. Eh? Mm -hmm. And they're all in the, the Tongan attire. Yeah, eh? right. So I'm wondering, because Tonga is not even playing. Eh? So I go over there and I say, why are you guys in this? Oh, we, we love the Tongan teams, even though they're not here, but we're here. <laughs> but they're from South Africa. They're from yeah. South Africa. Yeah. I mean, there must have been like 30 of them. Eh? They say they yeah. follow the sevens everywhere they go. So wow. every year I go, I go and check on them. Eh? So yeah. it's amazing, you know, how yeah. our fans are just, you know, I don't know. Like I said, yeah. they're from South Africa and... They're straight Balangis, eh? But they're wearing <laughs> our colors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And some of them was carrying our flag and just waving it, eh? So. And it was really nice to see the spirit of the, when Tonga played England and lost in the in the semis there at uh, 2017. Yeah. And the English team came out to go to their bus and it was just beautiful to watch the Tongan people uh, give them a guard of honor to their bus and wave them on, and you know what I mean. It was just yeah, so yeah. they weren't they weren't singing that hymn because it was just a hymn to sing. They were singing because they knew what love is. They knew what Tongan love is, and they, they wanted to show that. And that, that, just, that made me pr proud, really, really, really proud yeah. to see that. Hey, that. since you guys are here, Fedu, Paya, and Istolo, answer me this, man. Huh? I man, to be honest, I didn't watch the the lead until that that year, huh? until Tonga came out and played. But that particular run where it was taken away from uh, Fivita, eh? mm -hmm. or they, was that a knock on or, or, I mean, it's, as far as, from what I got from other guys, eh? they mm -hmm. said that you can't strip the ball, no. which it showed that it was. Eh? Yeah. So what's your take on you on that, guys? I, I thought it was stripped. Yeah. That's my personal take. I thought it was stripped. Of course. And um, you know, I, I, it was he wasn't part of the tackle, which you had to be to strip one on one. Right. Well, he just he just reached in and, and and stripped it out, and the and the referee didn't go to the uh, to yeah. the upstairs. Why why didn't they go upstairs on that on that particular play? I can't. I don't know. Because <laughs> they knew Tonga would won. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so huh? You said it. You said it. You said it. I didn't say it. You said it. <laughs> hey, yeah. who's going to argue with Biggie Stolomaka? Who's going to argue with Stolomaka? You said it, buddy. Bill, <laughs> uh, uh, so, um, I just want to talk about how Bayer talk about he had to to leave early, ten days early to the Olympics. Yes. Uh because just comparing to rugby. Uh, you know, when we went to New Zealand, I'm just talking about Fetu as well. Um, you know, I, I'm sure that Paya went there early. You know, he's got his own reasons for that. But with rugby, um, when we we play the All Blacks, uh, you know, I think uh, a lot of our boys were shocked. Because I can see it in their face, in their eyes, when they came out. Uh, there, there's a few players in the teams that, that um, you know, used to it, used to playing in front of 50,000. But we're talking about the world here. Mm -hmm. Millions and millions of people, just for one night, you know, one game that night. What I'm saying is, uh, there's only a few boys playing in front of 50,000 like Fetu'u and a few others. But the whole, the most of the players were playing like second division, third division overseas. Mm -hmm. When they came out, I could see in their eyes how shocked they were. Mm -hmm. 
because it's a mind thing, you know. I, I try and I try to explain to them these guys are just human beings. Right. Well, you know, and, and I'm saying to what Bayer was saying here to leave early, whether I did the right thing or the wrong thing, maybe we should, you know, just we, we had no excuse. But you know, the second half, I think the boys start to come back. Mm. You know, relax a little bit. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on on that, uh, Estolo, when I was at the Olympics, the hurrah didn't come till after my fight. You guys had it before the, <laughs> you know, yeah. you, had, you had it before, well before the actual game. Yeah. Even the first day or even the first opening day. And I wonder, how did you feel? Was it distracting to you? Because for me, it was after the one, but for you guys, having all the way through, you're coming up to the to the actual tournament itself. Yeah. Was it? Was it? Just uh, speaking from the point of view of as a player, was yeah. part of it. Like Dollar said, I agree with what Dollar said. Most of us players, only some of us were so used to that. Eh? But most of us players, some of most of the players, they're never used to it, so they can't control themselves or when to switch on and switch off. Right. They take their yeah. through the as soon as we get off the airport, full house, ten thousand people plus people. That's what I mean. That's airport. what I mean. Yes. Yeah. yes. Then when we get to the hotel, they still overwhelm yeah. the turnout with the turnout. Little did they know is it's it's behind us, it's game time. We've got to right. switch on now. We got we got training, focus and rugby. But most of the team, most of us, uh, most of the players, we're still stuck at the airport. Yeah. They never came yeah. to the. They never they, uh, training. Even though they were yeah. in training, they would still go back to the airport. They were still hanging right. around at the airport. It's good. It gets that way, eh? Yeah, it's it like get that way. Because yeah. I, I, I watched it and I tried to make my my nieces and nephews stay away because I thought you're just distracting them, leave them be. They came out anyway. They came out and and cheered you guys on. But I always thought, you know, I said you should come and support. I said no, man. I, these guys, they need to be. So because in the game do it afterwards. That was my personal take on it. Yeah. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to ask those of you who were really there whether that was uh, distracting or not. And, uh, and I suppose each that's, individual that's, treats it different. That's the difference between us, uh, the right. Tongans, and the big team. Mm -hmm. The big team, they train mm -hmm. mental side of it. Mm -hmm. Like almost every day. Yeah. They have people to rely on. If you struggle this, they go talk. Yeah, how, how I can... Uh, how can they fix this or can control this this area of their game off the field? I was talking, they just threw us out there. It's <laughs> like, yeah, enjoy that one. <laughs> Figure it yourself. Uh, maybe, maybe Siwaki as a coach can help me with that. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, the mind thing of the players or is it my fault that the, the players wasn't ready uh, to take on the field? But for me personally, to look at the players, you know, I could see them, how nervous they were. Some of them, like, they never, exp or maybe they were shocked that the whole millions of people are watching just one game. Yeah. And in the second half, they start to calm down a bit and then everything back to normal. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But because maybe some of them not used to play in front of yeah. tens of thousands of people, I only had a few guys who playing uh, so first were. grade, you know, super rugby. But most of the players, they only play in front of 3,000 people. But to play right in front of millions of people watching, I think they cause a big problem for us. Yeah. Because we only train for two weeks, you know what I mean? Yeah. This is how much time the Tongan team uh, get together. Two weeks, yeah. World Cup. And, and didn't uh, someone say that it was really unfair on the Pacific Island teams to get treated that way? Eh? Oh, very much. Yeah. Very much. And just to, to, to talk about the uh, Fetou before, uh, you know, uh, I remember before we played France on Saturday, Samoa were playing South Africa on Friday night. Right. In a very tough game, close game, Samoa just went down. Mm. And early in the morning, Wellington, Fetou, remember that we went, um, we went to a, a big gym just to do some line out stuff early in the morning, like nine o'clock. And there was a, Big parade in Wellington, Samoan uh, mm. community. And, you know, I said to the boys, you know, that's our Sam Pacific Island brothers, just wave at them, you know. Mm. Now it's our turn to beat France, even though because Samoa went down to South Africa, we have to beat them, you know. And the boys did wave at them, and the Samoans were like, you know, waving at us. Mm. You know, it doesn't matter. We're all Pacific Islanders. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. 
But uh, what I'm saying before is, uh, Siwaki can help me with that. You know, just talking about the players, how they, a lot of them were shocked. We only had two weeks to assemble camp, and that's it. That's how much time we get. You know, the, you're so right. You know, the, the thing that will help the most is time. You know, uh, that that's because it takes time to to settle down the mind. And I think Paya, when he mentioned that in the beginning, ten days, you know, I, I think uh, two weeks for the big for the big game. Uh, of course, not only. You play the All Blacks, but I believe it's one of the biggest uh, World Cup that the world we're, we're witnessing, mm -hmm. you know, right there. And uh, and 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 that's part of the mistake I think Tonga has is is you know the preparation. Uh, how can you come in two weeks to prepare to play the top uh, you know teams in the world? You know, I mean. Uh, what 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 still stuck on my mind? What Paya said earlier, uh, EC, is that uh, you know after he was so willing to go back to Tonga to to help out with organizing, just to look. Uh, I mean, any relay team. I was a head coach for uh, track and field as well. Those are minor. I mean, I mean, basic things that you're gonna have to have the same color, same uniform for a relay, and and uh, and like when Paya said he wanted to go back to Tonga and see what he can do to help, you know? And, and when he mentioned t tonight that when he got there, it was really worse than what he'd seen, you know, what can be worse than not knowing the basics, you know, because when we share this, I know you know about the rugby thing and when no no go kiai um alwatu ko a witness that is really worse than that. Uh, I think um you know I've been around them as well and from outside. In fact I'm uh, I'm part of the uh, Tasanok right now, I'm the president of the Tongan Creed Iron, you know, the Tongan uh, American football there. So I'm in their meetings, in the AGM meetings and all of above. Uh, it's also sad to hear that Paya said it may not happen in his lifetime. Oh, they're not willing to change, you know, it almost takes someone to, to get outside of Tonga, you know, and then to come in with a whole different mindset. Otherwise, while we're here, I'm just dreaming by uh, maybe, maybe AI Behat Fonga, Kefaha Tokoni, Ketale Niti. If they, if you were to mention two things, Paya and Isi, about your experience with Tonga, you know, uh, I'm there every year, maybe once or twice, and I meet with those guys. So I have a little idea. But those are one of the ideas that you mentioned, Paya. Uh, some of these old guys don't want to change, you know, they want to hang on to the whatever they have. Kako, you know, I'm just hoping. I think boxing, Paya, uh, I don't know if you guys agree. Kaya ha mea getau hawai maamani ka atoa. Go hawai rugby league here or break in. It's a team sport. That is like, oh man, that's another level. Because for a long time, I thought boxing would be the sport that Tonga yes. can, can win a world title, mm -hmm. right. you know, yep. and, and over and over. You know, and he, 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 you select that one individual. And I was mm. asking my bit, Kautama, he, Kuonga, oh, yeah. Kiti, whoever, all the, you know, people in the past. And then Paya, maybe during our lifetime, maybe we won't give up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, the rugby league now took us to a level that is unexpected, you know. And Mahalo is going out. Many of those boys have played in the big audience, you know. Mm. So they, it was in Hange uh, <laughs> uh, But but 
I think uh, Mate Matonga took us to where, you know, beating in New Zealand, I was so happy. I said, wow, do we have that much step to beat um, uh, uh, England? It's another step. Mm. You know what? Uh, you know, we, we, we can do it. Yeah? Our, our, yes. our people can do it. In the NFL here, we, uh, the ratio here, we, there is no nation. You know, Samoa has about 700,000 people, mm. you know, or maybe even more outside uh, compared to Kitonga. Mm. Race mm. in the NFL. They have for no idea a Malunga in Tonga. A Togolahi Korea. A ratio. But going, I may have speak very. You know, sound about our people. Kago ko tunga ko na ave rugby league tau toki ay na kaya ko fuka ko ay te tau ay ko tunga ko ya ya team sport pehe. Eh, kaka ko siyo ko ay fuhu ay boxing because paya is here. I I think there is a chance. Ke ke kawa tonga ya helau ang ko kiupa mo funky. Eh, I I think na ya pa fuhu kago Pambe, Kaupe, Otua, Hataimi, it's our lifetime. Get the fuck, fuck, man. Fuck, fuck. I know I'm jumping around. Sorry, Isi, Kako, 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 Tari, but I get me, Isi. Kako, 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 Eh, hoko gi wike wau gi mo siyo abe galasi. You need a few experience gi he de patinga, eh? Yeah. But uh, but I guess Tonga will say that money don't allow them, you know, to come in. Kaka ko e tahape e toko ni malo, fokia ka muto. You know, that type of thinking of going ahead it can only be, uh, it's normally generated by someone that's played at a representative level. It's hard for someone at grassroots or at local district to have that sort of preparatory thinking because right. they haven't experienced it. Yeah? Right. You know, you still a uh, coach, but you were, you know, you were at a high level professional athlete before. So, you know, in some sense you were thinking, what these these guys come on, get, you know, but you were still thinking in some sense as a professional athlete because you were so used to uh, elitism, you know, that they'll be more, more buyer to think uh, to prepare, you know, and that that's also a, the difference is the, the mindset of uh, thinking as an athlete and then like uh, coach was, you know, uh, alluding to, um, that's the the difference. We we're, we're thinking about how to perform, and, um, the best as an athlete, and then there's the other side of, don't go because of the money, money situation, you know. Um, but you know, like you said, Baya, um, when when we're continuously just planning for competitions. It's not only dangerous for athletes to come together in two weeks' time, or in some cases, a week's time to go mm. get an international platform. It's also cost. It 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 actually costs more money to go per competition every mm. single season or every single time. It's it's much more cost effective to plan ahead, you know. So and you you mentioned that to the Solomon Islands for the uh, 2023 games. Mm. You know, oh, people should be planning towards towards that. You know, you were you were fighting for it back in you know uh, in the early two uh, thousands, and then uh, still saying that in in two thousand and fifteen, you know, Tonga was just thinking about that year. You mm. were really thinking about two thousand nineteen, but also two thousand and twenty three. Oh. Mm. So, I mean, what, what are your what are your thoughts about uh, 2023, Bayer? For Solomon's, this is for the Solomon Islands games. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, no, uh, is that the letter you were referring to when you did you did I send to them, encouraging yeah. them to? Do? Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. I was wondering. Um, no, I, uh, again, it's uh, we're Pacific Islanders, we're neighbors. And I just wanted to, to say, look, learn from our mistake here. What we're doing was at the time the games wasn't canceled when I wrote that letter to them. Yeah. I know. So I was, uh, I was saying, listen, I've come and I've struck this problem. And, and of course, I know some of them, some of those guys from the, from the sports, I wanted to help them out. Um, and that, but I, 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 Solomon Tonga had called it the game, it was the first nation outside the Big Five to host the games. Mm -hmm. And so everybody was watching us, what we're doing. And we failed. We we uh, we we exposed ourselves to being not really uh, as a sporting nation to a proud sporting nation to to fulfill that promise that we gave. And uh, I just felt like uh, that, that Solomon Islands is now taking that mantle as the first outside the Big Five. And rather than me keeping it to my chest and hoping they fail. Like I did with the Fiji Sevens, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I thought I'd listen. I want to help. I want to help you guys uh, learn from our mistakes, and if you can, um, at the time the game was cancelled, I thought it would still go ahead, but I wanted them to make that road less rocky for them. Uh, for the, and as it turned out, um, I predicted it was going to fail, and it did. Uh, the, the, the games failed, and only because, no matter what they say about the uh, the reasons and that there was no money. I'm going to say one, there was one big mistake and it's the only mistake we really made and we suffered for it as we failed to win the people over. After we won the bid, instead of coming back in triumph, holding up our flag and say, we have won the biggest event in our history to come to Tonga, come and join us. We'll go to the palace, represent the king and say, mission accomplished, sir because we were sent out by the king to create, to bring it back as a celebration of, our, of us as a new democracy. Instead, we came back in the night, we snuck back into the airport, right? As if we'd stolen the games. I wrote an email to our, 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 our team and said, don't hold a private uh, uh, celebration. Bring the people in, we need them. Mm. They disregarded it and held a private cocktail party amongst potential sponsors. That to me was the beginning of the end. And this is 2012, remember, we just won the game. I knew we were gonna lose the game then on because we failed to take, uh, we failed to bring in popular support. We took it for granted. And when the, um, now Akhilis Boiviva had already said that uh, he's not in favor of the game back in 2012, right? If the people had gone 100% behind the games, no politician would touch it. It would happen. Yeah. As it was, and I'm kind of happy, it, as you know, I, I, I changed my support and said, listen, we should cancel. It's going to be an embarrassment. Um, you know, as it happened, it was canceled. And, uh, and I think for the, for the better. Even though I was I was for the for the for the sports team there, but it would have been an embarrassment. We had no we had no program of development for the for the athletes. There was no um, all it was that we got paid. I was there for a year. I got paid for doing nothing. You know, as much as I tried, I was told I was an ambassador. An ambassador all he does is go around and smile and shake people's hands. Wave, you got to wave too, man. Gotta wave, got to wave. <laughs> that is where we are. And, and I, I, I've never spoken outright about it, but that's where we are. And um, I, I, I said to my, you know, because this game is this game will, will, will be an embarrassment. We should be our judge. Our, the judgment of how we successful we are is not how much stadiums we build, but how much our athletes, the results, the sport the results should speak for themselves. Um, for example, the swimming team had no swimming pool to train in. We were three years out at the time, no swimming pool to train in. I went to the, our, our bosses and I said, I know it's not our responsibility, but can we get just a concrete bath? So the kids can turn, uh, the swimmers can practice turning. You know, because it's, they, they were going and touching and coming back like, like a normal swimmer would. No, so <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't spinning around like you should as a swimmer, right? Yeah. But they said they can't because they're training the ocean. They can't see the, the turn. So put a concrete bath in, fill it with water, and get them to just go back and forth and practice their turning. 
I was told that's not our that's not our problem. And I said, yes, you're you're right. It's absolutely not our problem. But come 2019, it's everybody's problem. Yes, you know, <laughs> it's everybody, and 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 that's the thinking I was trying to change, and it never really worked out. And so I thought I'd leave a year before it was cancelled. And I think it's in our creed, eh? That that fear to eh? To, to, to listen, eh? At least. Listen and let something in. Hey, if you don't like it, kick it back out. Hear somebody yeah. else. But no, yeah. it's my way or the highway. Eh? Well, there's a there's a fear. There's a fear that they uh, that they have, and um, the fear of unknown. If it's if it's if it's not known, it's it's not good. Please. Well, you don't know until you try it, you know. And I, I want to instill. Well, they they ask the same thing of us guys. They ask us to be fearless. They ask us to be committed beyond ourselves. Right. They mm -hmm. ask us to love our country. I'm asking for the government or the, who are the administrators, the leaders are to show the same, show the same things you want to, you ask of us, you know, and if we can get there to do it, and you know. I, I, and later throw in, remember you an um, ambassador. Let me read this to you. I promised, uh, I promised this guy that I was going to read it to you. Uh, Martin Storage is his name, man. Eh? Mm -hmm. Uh, Baya represented all us Polynesian. So proud of, so proud to follow his journey and achievements. Would love to have seen him continue his football career from those early days at Penrose. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And great memory seen Baya play football during his younger days. Uh, that's from Martin Stowers. Stowers, so yeah, yeah. He was, uh, he was our coach for our. Our football team, our, our yeah. American football team, and uh, I love the game. I love the game, and uh, uh, I uh, it's hell. If there had been uh, opportunities, uh, you know, if I'd grown up there, I probably would have played played that sort of boxing. So, but no, I uh, I enjoyed the, that. I was a high school uh, kid, and I was playing with men at the, at the time. I think. Oh wow! I was big enough to handle it. So, and uh, yeah. Man, I, hey Martin, if you have any uh, snippets of uh, our boy here, send it in, huh? <laughs> sorry, 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 it took it took a while for your question, but uh, time check. Itana kia tu e e bio ki he ki me gana mula ve ki ai kau ki being Polynesian, he. You know, I, I mentioned uh, early seventies. I was there. You know, you know, I, and Isi, you mentioned homo wave go get kau hamoa. You know, is like a, a Polynesian high school here in America. You know, our football team and I basically have a hiva go go policia gato. Remember. Maulai e mato, we kolo policia, we kau nusila, got fishi ha mo atahi, you know. They, so our high school is like a Polynesian high school. In fact, it's known in America as, you know, the Polynesian high school. Hangi high school ha mo, tolai. Yeah, came a long way. I was talking seventy in the early seventies, yes. but now. I think it, it, it helps. Uh, we help each other. Okay? Like, like, you know, yes. uh, whoever it is. But when I pick the seven, you will say seven, go, love, gap, you. When we go there, man, uh, I think we motivate each other. We are the biggest uh, uh, rivalry when we play each other, but we're also the biggest supporter mm. when we it play other people. Each other. Yeah. You know, Peter, that's very, I'm going to love that team. You know, I'm going to love that team. The time we got college team, NFL, brothers. I they are really close. Team Vice Kahema, all the all the players go to Polynesian go now They're like closer than their own brothers. when we look at games and we look at the roster, 
va con cole va venga con policía stay with the Polynesian name y con me allá con te que va a esa poti you know we just go through the roster this mark be a con policía gato you know and I think we help each other you know when Samoa play when Fiji play we you know um va con tú y con 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 tauki kakai you know our Tongan people are very proud people and I think some of the pressure Angeka shocky go when I go here, you see, it's shocking to hit the audience. But I think a presser also knowing that the whole nation, the whole world, goeka tonga, it's it's really behind you, and they are watching you. And every angeka they are mo ekita, you know, their happiness depends on you, <laughs> whether they. <laughs> <laughs> Eat tonight, good or damn, but out the hamate. You, you know, uh, yeah. whatever you do is beyond yourself. You know, uh, we get there. Hey, go for. I did my best, so I know. No, that's why I'm banging. I go, hey, go full out the hamate. I'm going to go. I go do my money. Go, oh, she got down. You know, go. Le amata maya gum le 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 be was covid day. Everything is bad. We find a hong of a tonga of really upon you, you know, and I think it could be great when you use it for a positive reinforcement, but it also can fail you if you can't handle the pressure. Yeah. You're beyond yourself. Well, Instead yeah. of living in the moment of they get tired of a go get fight for who. We was forty big in that time. It was guy like that. I'm a guy. Tamate, tamate. Can you see more? Get feel it out. Get warm. I put tamate. I put my hand there. Fire. Get too long. I'm a big guy. But anyway, but uh, but my point is, as Polynesian, we are really helping each other. Yeah, we are motivating each other, and I think we keep that going. That relationship yeah. is great. To see those Matematonga guys with the Samoa team and everybody come in a circle and, and pray together at the end, that picture is priceless. Yeah. That picture is priceless. It's beyond the game. And then right. you forget who won the game mm. because when you see that kind of uh, of love respect and Pamalodga Isi, Isi and Empire, I just want Hello. you to know that uh, what you accomplish, no Tongan is ever going to forget. It's probably one of the highest accomplishment any individual in Tonga have have accomplished. So we we salute you. We we are proud of you. And you see what you guys have done on your career. We watch you fetu. We are watching you know. Even though they're born and raised in America, a lot of our kids, believe me, they follow every rugby game, every rugby league, union or league. Doesn't matter. They follow up. Why? Maybe we don't even know that Tamatonga, Tamatonga, Tamatonga. That Tim Manoa, all the all of you great athletes. Or maybe say it out of sea. It's good that we are small, because right now we can all remember all of you guys with all your accomplishments. But you guys for no idea, they they can't remember. They got millions of people, you know. Como todo. And uh, when uh, Tim and Bill and us. Uh, Have our little Hall of Fame going to hit a faggy, then you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you guys will it. definitely be. It, <laughs> well, you know, I mentioned that I was there at that fight. Me and my best friend Sikeli, uh, we were under the, the the stadium or the stands, just watching the fight from there. <laughs> we were what uh, I think 12, 13 years old again, eh? but. Uh, <laughs> Man, that was a uh, some scary night. Eh? I would never forget that uh, because they actually came to the house. It was like twelve of them came for my brother Paul. Eh? <laughs> But man, what, how crazy that was, though, man! Hey, like, yeah. Phil, that's why that's why me and Paul was boxing and getting yeah. ourselves ready. <laughs> Dwayne Feely and them, eh? they came over to the house, and I said, "Man, you guys are crazy, man." <laughs> You know, my mother, I 
，佢攞多一多嘅，我哋我識佢啊。第二日我一啲肥泡，我嘅我估计多多啦，咩搞多啊？我一啲肥泡闹到，诶，讲乜乜多肥泡喂？乜嘢几多啦？咩解啊？啊，阿阿丽丽闹到。Anyways, guys， 啊，个摆喺呢一时，马路市系啦，依家嘛系。Oh, I love enjoying.、Um, you know, it's time for us to wrap this up. Huh? So we'll give、uh, each and every one of you guys a chance to. Say something, and we、we'll、end up with uh with Baya, eh? And then I'll close out the night, eh? So go ahead, guys. Oh, I'll go first. Baya,、okay. we just want to thank you, man, for taking the time and coming on, so we can have a conversation. You know, a conversation is starting to get a lot better and and enjoyable. Just you know, talking to athletes and. And、uh, hearing the stories of uh, uh, you know going through what the, through their career and what they went through and all that, and it's it's relating. You know, I can relate to all that stuff. But、uh, it's just、uh, it's a pleasure, you know, to have you、uh, talking to you. Isi's great talking to you and and the、uh, two. But、um, you know, just to say thank you for coming on here and sharing your. Uh, your career, and、uh, I'm sure our fans really enjoy tonight of、uh, the conversation that we have with with all of you. So, and Isi,、uh, uh, your、um, your nephew, Akimi. Ah, yeah, too much. The the night the night that we had our conversation, he, I, I went to my brother's house. He was there. So I told him that I, I was talking to you. He said, "Oh man," <laughs> he said to say hi. But he's he's doing okay. He's out here now, so he's doing okay. So he he wanted me to tell you he's okay. So, but um, thank you, man. A、hey, uh, Baya, thank you very much, man. Appreciate you coming on tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Hey, Baya.、Uh, uh, oh, on my low, go ahead, sir. You know. I just want to,、uh, you know, it's an honor to join you guys, and、uh, um, you know, Isi,、uh, what do you do out there? We are so proud of you, and what you're trying to do, you know, with、uh, with our people. Neonga Bay, most you guys are successful in in the different things that we do outside of our island, but、uh, you know, we're always looking in to to do something, you know, to give back, you know, somehow, and.、Uh, Sometimes it's difficult, but、uh, it won't、uh, stop us from trying.、Um, you know, I've been trying to establish American football there、uh, since 2002. You know, and I brought、uh, Halotingata and all those guys to Tefaiwa Stadium. Can you believe, Bill? I mean,、uh, Will Tukuafu. I had about five NFL guys on my first trip to Tonga Kingdom Bowl in 2002. You know, to take five hours right out after high school. I just wanted them to, hey guys, let's go back home, back to the roots. You know,、mm -hmm. that's I named my program as Back to the Roots, just to taste it. You know, and、uh, mm -hmm. and I know you guys do the same thing. You know, we're trying to see anything and whatever we can do. I I brought about almost a hundred boys within the last、uh, since 2014、mm -hmm. from Tonga, New Zealand, Australia. American football here in the states, so、uh, they're all over the place, and some people、mm -hmm. are being successful in、uh, Division One scholarship in college. But it's what we're trying to do to do what we can to help our people. And I know you guys have tried, and you guys、mm -hmm. still do, and we're trying. And、uh, I just want to thank you guys that、uh, you know you guys are trying to give back for two. I know we are in, in a whole lot, and thank you, Tim and Bill, and Carlo,、uh, for having this, because、uh, I think、uh, it, it, you know, there's a lot of good things that can come out of this, you know, for, you know, for the future of、uh, of Tonga, for the youth,、um, and we'll find a way to, to, you know, maybe to add on to it, but.、Uh, Paya and Isi, all of you guys are legend in your own ways. 
uh, Malo or Peter, you know, to see you guys so humble and take the time to to talk when we our people can hear your voice in your own statement and the way it was, it will help our youth to know. You know, like Tim said last time uh, on our meeting, it's not easy, guys. You know, a lot of commitment, you know, dedication, and a lot of work, you know, in order to get to the level that these guys are at. But uh, of a big, you know, we'll ask for the blessings for us to continue to to be together and work and hopefully someday uh, we'll find a, a perfect way to give back to help uh, the young ones, you know, people that have the talent, but they have no way of, uh, you know, reaching their potential. From Aloha to Carlo, thank you, Carlo, for what you do. And for everybody here from Aloha to, you know, Mutol Gotoa is Queenie. Sorry, I didn't see the whole screen. When you call, we have a Hano Hano. Man, Malo a bit. But, oh, fat. Thank you, Bill. Malo. Love you, coach. Thank you. Paya, I'll just be real quick. But I just want to thank you, Paya, for coming on the show. Thanks for accepting the invitation. Uh, I, I was kind of hesitant at first because I know you're a private guy, but uh, I was so happy when you agreed to uh, come on. Right. And also, man, this is the first time talking to you in almost like 30 years, man. Uh, you know, I still remember uh, uh, that, that day at the gym, you were trying to teach me some footwork and stuff. But, uh, you know, I kind of I, I kind of I, I had that as my little claim to fame of knowing you. Uh <laughs> You know, I told people that I trained with you, but they didn't know it was only for like one hour. But, uh, <laughs> you did well. You know, I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming on, man. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll stay in touch. Go ahead. I'm just going to be very quick. Uh, it's a privilege and an honor to uh, to to have you and and talk to you. And thank you, uh, Baya, for imparting some of your you know, really important knowledge uh, and valuable uh, uh, knowledge that you have with us and, you know, your, um, your thoughts. Uh, now that I know that uh, you, you're not so uh, far away, maybe we'll catch up with the, the family sometime. But thank you very much uh, for, um, you know, making that, that dot a little bit bigger for everyone uh, around the world to see Tonga. And uh, uh, thank you, gentlemen, uh, Tim, Bill, Befoke Istolo, uh, Siwaki, uh, Fidu, and Hano. Always love and appreciate uh, you, gentlemen. Thank uh, you. And also to our beautiful viewers for, for um, always being with us uh, yep. every week. Yeah. 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 Um, just for me, uh, Baya, uh, back in 96, I was just hearing a little story. Back then in 96, I was still running around in uh, Robinson Road in Mangi, uh, <laughs> watching you fight. It was uh, it's funny, nice to uh, meet you in there, but I was, it was a big inspiration for me to look up to someone that out there representing our country, uh, our little small country, and I uh, appreciate everything you do for our, our, our country and please. Uh, I do want to see in my lifetime uh, another fire with him out there or, or better. Don't give up on our country and uh, please fight on. And I hope one day they calm down and um, stop being greedy and be humble. Uh -huh. Humble themselves uh -huh. and let people that know what they're doing run the show and, and, and for a, a better future for our, our, our country. Uh, all in all, man, uh, all of the best for 2021 and uh, offer to be on the fan. God bless. Thank you. I love to do. Thank you. Thank, Bye. Thank, you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I won't, I don't give up because uh, it's not about the people. It's about the country that I'm, uh, that I'm, I'm fighting for. So whatever people that throw up the barriers, I've got to think about the, the other people, the smaller people, the Tongan people itself. And that's what it's always been about. Um, I want to also thank you guys for what a wonderful, uh, wonderful show. I was always a little reluctant because I kind of didn't know what the world was about, but 
coming into this uh, to this page and uh, seeing that uh, all the fellow fellow Tongans talking about something that's important. And uh, I think you, 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 as I said in the beginning, you guys are putting out a very important, uh, um, uh, I would say, the responsibility or duty uh, of doing this, so that it can be discussed and change won't happen unless it's uh, it's out there. And that's why I wasn't a little shy about, I wasn't too shy about putting it out there so that uh, people can know a, a, a different side of the story and make up their minds. Of course. Of course. And it's, it's wonderful that you inform us and, and allow us to tell the story and hear our different voices. So thank you all for, for, your, for your important work. And uh, to my brother, Isi, you know, uh, thank you. It's great to, to see you here. And, uh, you know, I, I followed you and your rugby career as well. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you one and all. Thank you, uh, Tongue and Pro Athletes of today and yesterday. And that's what this platform is. And uh, like what uh, our champion, uh, Baya Wolfgram here alluded to was, uh, you know, it's something that we will bring the athletes of yesterday. So the athletes of today can maybe learn you know, some of the things that they have done. And some of these guys paved the roads for some of you younger uh, uh, athletes of today. Yeah? So, you know, uh, to bios today, the 14th will be Peter Alatini, former uh, All Blacks uh, member. And also on the 22nd, the 22nd will be Botele Tuihalamaka. We will go back to the 1973 uh, team that won and beat Australia. Eh? So Botele uh, to Yalamaka will be on the 22nd. And also on the 28th, we will have Malakai Alatini, which is the father of Pita Alatini, who himself was a member of our uh, uh, Tongan uh, Ikaritahi team. Eh? So we got a, a, a great lineup all the way up to February uh, for you guys. Eh? And we're waiting because some of these people are getting mad because we're placing them way back there. <laughs> so we're going to wait and, and call them a week or two before so they feel a little more. <laughs> <laughs> You're and, scheduling me for three months. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're not trying to, uh, you know, go by you guys. We're just trying to bring from the older days, you know, up to you guys this time. Eh? So mm -hmm. please be patient with us when we call you guys. Eh? You guys don't think that you'll have something good to say to the, the young athletes, but you do. Eh? You do. Just like how Baya did, Istalomaka did, Fetu had, they all had great things for you guys to learn from. So, again, you know, on the 14th, Peter Alatini, which is uh, next Thursday, I think. Ah, huh, Carlo? Huh? So, yeah. hopefully, uh, we will see all you guys. Eh? I want to thank uh, our boss, Carlo. Uh, Caroline Matamua, eh? Tim Manoa, eh? Fitu, also Hano, and uh, Istolomaka, and Siwaki, uh, Coach Siwaki Liwai. These, man, we can't get a better cast than this. Eh? Yep, you're right. This is a great panel for us to be talking to people every week. So we invite every, every one of you guys, and that includes you, Paya, whenever you have time, hey, this panel, we can use all your lights. Eh? So, <laughs> Join in anytime. Love to all of you and good night from Tongue and Pro Athletes of yesterday and or today and yesterday. Okay. Hello. Did you say something? Bye. 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 B